What is real? What is truth? We all know a universal truth. Our differences lie in how we distort it. TNA is a fantasy land where everyone's illusions become my reality. I am the Antichrist of professional wrestling. There's a turning point in everybody's life. Tonight is that night for the enigma. Your acceptance is meaningless. Live for today, die for tomorrow. I've cheated death enough for a thousand lifetimes. If you want something, I am who I am. You take it. And I do what I have to do. I serve one master, and that master is Jeff Hardy. I am the Antichrist of professional wrestling. Antichrist. And now, TNA Wrestling presents Turning Point. Live from Orlando, Florida, welcome to the first pay-per-view of the new Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, Eric Bischoff regime. Plus, it's the first title defense for the new TNA World Heavyweight Champion, Jeff Hardy. And it's the final match ever for Brother Ray and Brother Devon, Team 3D. Ladies and gentlemen, it's all tonight at Turning Point. We open tonight's pay-per-view with the first of three title bouts. The No Limits X Division takes center stage with this championship matchup. The opening contest for Turning Point live on pay-per-view is scheduled for one fall. Introducing, first of all, from the Jersey Shore, accompanied to the ring by Cookie, he is the challenger, Robbie E. Robbie, you ready? Oh, oh, my man! Settle down, Taz. <laughs> Watch that fist pumping in the booth. I'll tell you what. I said it. This past Thursday on Impact, I'll say it again. I really feel that Robbie... Oh, 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 there it is again. The fist pump, I love it. I'm telling you, man, I think that Robbie's got an awesome opportunity here. And I think we're going to crown a new X Division champion live right here at Turner Point. Hey, my dude, can he handle the pressure? <laughs> I don't know, we're going to find out. He's got the Goomba colors on right there. Look at Cookie. She's just smoking hot. Look at that, she's got the hairspray that was supported for Parsippany, by the way. <laughs> That's in New Jersey for those non-Northeasterners. Oh, 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 my roll here. And now, introducing his opponent. From Elizabeth, New Jersey, he is the TNA X Division Champion of the World, Jay Lethal. Well, it's Jersey in the house times two. The Shore versus Elizabeth. How's that for a contrast, Taz? Hey, what better place than Orlando, Florida, to have two dudes from Jersey fight it out for X Division gold? And that's what we have to kick off turning point for you. Those of you who saw Bound for Glory, you might recall Robbie E. Cookie. They went into the crowd and spoiled Shane Lethal's post-match celebration when he retained the X Division title that last month in Daytona Beach, Florida. And then recently on Impact, is there the X Division Championship belt held high by referee Earl Hebner. Recently on Impact, it was a Jersey street fight. Cookie got involved. Robbie E. victorious. He earns the title shot tonight. Well, I feel what happened at Bound for Glory when Robbie E. and Cookie kind of stole the spotlight from Jane Lethal was, in my opinion, seizing an opportunity. I mean, the biggest stage for TNA, the post-match celebration of Lethal, and, and they come in and, and cut off that feel-good moment for the X Division champion. Well, folks, good for Robbie E. and uh, Cookie, I'm sure. Oh, this you're right. Well, you can see Cookie, she's innocent. She's such, she's all about innocence, Cookie. Look at her. That girl is pure as the white, white as snow, or, you know, that expression. Yeah. Is that what Jay Wow said? Oh. When Cookie slapped her and shot her everywhere from ET to TMZ. 
Right there, you see Jay Lethal on that lockup, putting uh, Robbie in that corner, putting all his weight against the man. And well, Lethal was one step ahead of Robbie. That quick reversal. Great agility on the float over, followed by the series of arm drags from the X Division champ. Yeah, super, super deep arm drags, followed up by a Excellently executed on ball by Jay Lethal, the exhibition champ. Saw you hanging out earlier today with Robbie E. and Cookie, your fellow Northeasterners. Yeah, that's what we I do, mean, you know what I mean? I'm looking at his trunks, I see GTW. I know GTL, Jim Tan Laundry. Oh, GTW, Jim Tan Wrestle. Hello. I got you. How do you not know that? Why wouldn't it be? Of course. Nice forearm shiver right against the face there. Oh, to Lethal's face, we're going to try to follow up, get a little antsy, oh! Oh, oh, oh! I'm telling you. By Zion, he went flying over the top. Look at Jay Lethal's eyes. Not good intentions in the champion's uh, face. Oh, had the momentum coming off the ropes. Oh. Went for the baseball slide. <laughs> Robbie E moves out of the way, but then Woo. ends up on his back after the knife edge. That was a pretty heavy-duty chop across the upper pectoral region. Oh, man, Jay Lethal, he brought it. Follows up the advantage, does Lethal. While referee Hebner tries to keep Cookie on the far side of the ring and out of the battle, Lethal gets in some shots on the challenger, Robbie E. Tosses him in, and from the apron, watch him measure and spring. Caught him with the drop. Tremendous athleticism by the champ. Here we go. Lateral cover leads to two. You see Lethal not hooking a leg, but that's okay. He took a wing, took the arm, got wrist control of Robbie, trying to keep both shoulders on the mat. Look at that hip toss. Watch the cartwheel. And then the in tight drop kick. Near leg hook. Didn't have great weight positioning, however, on the pin attempt and leads to just two. Gonna bring it up one more time, Taz. Yes, big match pressure, big match situation. Lethal's been there. Multiple time X Division champion. Robbie E, not so much. Yeah, no, I agree with you. And I, you know, like I said on Thursday, I felt that Robbie was gonna be crowned a new X Division champ. I said that on Robbie's entrance here live tonight. But looking at what's going on here, uh, I'm not too sure now. Maybe, uh, maybe I was incorrect in my opinion. Because your opinion could be wrong, you know. Both guys in, in great physical shape Ooh. as we see. Oh, he went for the lethal combination, but it got stopped. It got blocked. Well scouted by Robbie E. Oh, man. Hot shot right across the esophagus, the throat area. Look at that. Hey, I'll tell you what. Robbie E looking to ground and pound. It's never, I was going to say, should have maybe went for a cover a little quicker off the, uh, the hot shot. And he's getting a little frustrated, Robbie. Ooh, that was one of the points that I wanted to bring out when it came to the experience difference, and maybe we just saw right there Robbie E miscalculating instead of going for the immediate pin. He went to the mount, started raining in the rights instead of going for the cover. Well, you cannot argue the fact, Mike, that Robbie is, no, he's not shy of getting physical. He pounded Jay Lethal a couple of Forms right across his chest and sternum area. Quickly drags him right That's back out. Dragged the man in and tried to hook a leg, but Jay Lethal, the councilman pro, realized what was happening and kicked out quick. Talked about the great condition of both of these athletes, but Taz, the longer this match goes, you have uh, a pick whether it favors one guy or the other? Uh, th yeah, it's hard to say. You could, uh, as you pointed out, Woo. you could see that was heavy right there. He might get a new chip here. Watch this. You could see, as you said, Mike, both of these men are in tremendous condition. As my friends in the UK say, fine fickle. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so, you know, who knows? As the match progresses, the longer it goes, I think it might be a dead heat in regards to conditioning. In terms of the power game, we saw advantage oh. Robbie E the first time that he sent Lethal with incredible impact and authority into the corner, now follows up again in the other corner. My only opinion here for Robbie E, what he needs to do, he's put a lot of pressure, a lot of impact, pounding type striking moves on Jay Lethal. I really feel this is the point in the match where he got to hit some high impact 
moves, throws, kicks, something to that effect. Or an abdominal stretch, I guess, just to wear, the, wear your opponent down. And he's got that uh, abdominal stretch in real tight. Back to the basics for Robbie E. With the mid-ring submission hold. Certainly neutralizing lethal at this point. Oh, you see right there, lethal trying to break the leg out, break the, the base out of Robbie. And it worked for a moment. Had the momentum wow. as he came oh. off the ropes, immediately cut off, and a near fall two count for Robbie E off the elbow. Wasn't a basic elbow either, man. A running back elbow, and Robbie running full speed. And now with a rear gut wrench affecting the breathing right now of the champion. Similar to the abdominal stretch in terms of keeping lethal away from his specialty of going high risk. Yeah, well, if you cut, you cut down and cut off the midsection and work on the midsection of a high flyer, you're definitely going to ground him. And I think that's sound strategy by the challenger. Cookie, man, she's uh, she's fired up. The lethal powering up. And speaking of power, Robbie E takes him, fires him back into the corner, and Lethal gonna try and fight back out of the corner, and well, just can't get anything going. Yeah, well, just Robbie just relentless with those shoulder blocks right into the uh, into the stomach, the abdomen region. But here comes Jay Lethal now. Well, Jay Lethal, man, there's no doubt loaded with heart and intestinal fortitude. Flying four off with the clothesline. Now he's strung together that series of moves. Oh, that handspring. Oh, that back elbow. Tremendous right there. Crowd at turning point, showing their support for the reigning X Division champ. Well, Jay Lethal looking around at the trough man here, feeding off of our live crowd here, our live audience in the impact zone. Went for a sunset. Maybe nobody there. Look, the referee's dealing with Cookie here. And Lethal has the shoulders. Got the, he's got him beat. Robbie E down. I think you could have counted to four or five at that point. Cookie from outside caught the attention of our senior official. And of course, Lethal had to deal with Cookie's interference in the Jersey street fight recently on Impact. That the match that enabled Robbie E to get the title shot tonight. Head of steam oh, goal. Lee, here, here he comes. comes. Here he goes. Man. Perfection suicide. right there, man. Per perfection on that suicide dive. Caught him flush. Oh, man, my Paisan Robbie is in trouble. Lethal laying in those rights. Maybe, uh, maybe Cooker should have used a little more hairspray. Robbie's hair, he's getting pounded about the head area there. That dude's getting all screwed up. Look at the face of this guy, look at him. And lethal's on him like a full court press. Boy, he's not giving him a second to no, recover. Sure not. Lethal keeping the pressure on. Lethal better be careful, he don't get counted out. Because Robbie ended up getting in the ring trying to escape, getting away from Lethal, who actually broke the count for himself. Oh, sort of helped out Lethal in yes, terms of breaking yes. the count in a roundabout way. Not exactly what he had in mind. I think he was trying to escape and get out of the clutches of the X Division champ. Well, this is that we talked about conditioning. So, whoa, whoa, look at this. Looks like Cookie, that, that's that, the hamstring. Yeah. Yeah. to the corner. Champion's looking good here, Mike. It's gonna go high risk. Whoa, 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 whoa. Look at the blatant interference. Yeah, well, referee, the referee, we can't see, but referee is getting that hairspray out of the ring and telling someone to get their hands on it. Blatant interference from outside by Cookie. That allows Robbie E to catch the ropes. He crotches lethal. Gonna go neck breaker. Here's the cover. Here's the two. He's gonna do it. Oh! Wow. New 
Ratchet. Oh, Ladies man. and gentlemen, the winner of the match and new TNA Exhibition Champion of the World, Robbie E. Look at Robbie E. winning his first major title. My oh, man looks like he's going to have a conniption. Your prediction was right. Should have you out in Vegas with me. I'm telling you. Which Brenty showed lifting up Cookie right there, but I'll tell you, we just made history here. Let's take another look at some of the Tom Fullery and shenanigans that happened at the end here. That's that suicide dive by the then X Division champion. Referee was getting the hand spray out of the ring. Cookie interjected herself, tripped up lethal. And who capitalizes on it? Robbie E. The new X Division Champion. Wow. Going back to the Jersey Shore with some X Division gold. Fist pumping his way back to the shore. Holds the X Division title high. And as we have just witnessed, if you can stop fist pumping for just a second, we kick off turning point with a new X Division champ, Robbie E. Victorious, serious assist for Cookie. So I think we've established, Taz, that they are a lethal combination, but it did take two to beat Jay Lethal. Hey, listen, it definitely wasn't clean the way Robbie was crowned the X Division champion, no doubt. But hey, listen, a win's a win, a championship is a championship, and we just crowned a new one here, man. That was pretty cool. Let's talk about what we have in store for you, ladies and gentlemen, tonight. There's the potential for someone in EV2 to be fired tonight. Well, yes, Mike, the EV2 Fortune situation tonight. If EV2 loses tonight against Fortune, someone from EV2 will be gone from TNA. Major milestone for Team 3D. Brother Ray, Brother Devon, final match of their careers as a tag team. Well, correct, Mike, Team 3D, last match tonight as a team, no doubt. Will they retire as champions against the Guns? We're gonna find that out in a little bit. In addition to that, Jeff Hardy to make. The first defense as new TNA World Heavyweight Champion, Matt Morgan, really stepping up to the plate. The absence of Mr. Anderson, Ken Anderson, wanna send our Best wishes for Ken Anderson to recover from the serious concussion issues that he had, but certainly the door is open for Matt Morgan. He challenges tonight for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. That our turning point main event. But now we're gonna send it to the back. Our broadcast colleague, Christy Hemi, standing by with the new TNA knockout, Mickey James. Tonight on Turning Point, it's Mickey James versus Tara. Now, Mickey, you came into TNA Wrestling with your eyes set on the TNA Knockouts Championship, but it looks like it's gotten a little bit personal. Yeah, it's gotten a little too personal with Tara. You've taken something that was business and turned it into something personal. Let me tell you something, Tara. You may not like me. You may have never liked me. And perhaps the feeling was a little bit mutual, but one thing you will do is respect me. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the TNA Knockout. Introducing, first of all, accompanied to the ring by Madison Rain, she is TNA Knockout. Yeah! I think JB for hitting that rum candy again. <laughs> Not title match is what you were saying, right? Oh, was that Cougar your influence? Cougar in the house! Cougarific! Oh! And now, introducing her opponent! She is TNA Knockout, Mickey! I'm a Chaps. You got chaps on, I think, right? Yeah, those are chaps. Close enough. Big fan of the chip of chaps. Oh. Situation between these two and Taz, we've talked about it, documented it on impact. It's just gotten so personal. And really, it, it, it dates back, the issues between these two dates back to before they were even in TNA. Yeah, you know, there's a, a history here between these two ladies, and uh, obviously not a fun and jovial history. Or jovial. 
Yeah, what'd I say? That's yeah, nice. Close enough. Must be an echo in here. I think you were hitting the rum candy at the same <laughs> time as JB. Look at that backdrop counter by Mickey James. Both these ladies, I mean, no, uh, no secret. They've both been very successful, former champions, both of them. World-renowned superstars, and see, smart by Mickey not to rush out and play Tara's game going out there. That's it. No reason to rush into that. Still can't forget the brawl that these two had recently on Impact. Wait, got all the knockouts involved. That thing was Ooh. absolutely out of control. What a move there by Tara. This is almost like a continuation of that. I, don't, I tell you what, Mike, I don't envy referee Jackson James. <laughs> Who's uh, yeah. officiating this match right now? Good you luck. never know what these two ladies are going to break out and do. How about that move with Tara outside the ring? Almost as I watched that move, looked to me like something that, that she would use to try and set up Mickey James to maybe hit that widow's peak. Uh, nothing wrong with that if she's trying to affect the neck, shoulder griddle of Mickey James. I think that's a good strategy by Tara. And you can hear. A live audience here kind of torn between two knockouts. The Mickey chance slightly outnumbering the Terrace. What are you counting? How do you know? Well, with the Widow's Peak instead, momentum carries Mickey through. And now gonna go single leg crab. Yeah, he's got that single leg crab in, and looks like Mickey pulling himself some of those velvet black locks of Tara. From the moment that Mickey James arrived in TNA, she made her goal here crystal clear as she gets pulled out to the arena floor by Tara. Mickey James wants to be TNA knockout champion more than anything. Well, you remember, I mean, Mickey James was not very upset with Tara when Tara basically was the knockouts champ, more or less laid down for Madison Rain. I thought she was kind of doing a friend a favor, and uh, Mickey took offense to that. It's all about competition. I mean, come on, Taz, doing her friend a favor. Well, she did, now that you mention it, Madison did get Tara her job back here in TNA. Yeah. That after beating her, to cost her her job. Right. Get in there, get in there. Well, both ladies were trying to jockey for position. Referee doing a good job getting in between them. Whoa, got him right by the hair. Mickey just sailed across the ring by the much larger and powerful Tara. Tara's a little out there. You know, she's a little nuts. slightly she's a little twisted. See what it says in her shirt? Cougar. It says. Oh. No, that was, <laughs> that, was, that, was that was Thursday I night got the on Cougar impact. Thing going on. I see you do. Cougar, Cougar. One track mine. <laughs> Snap suit. Look at that. Look at that. Two. Wow. Look wow. at dragon. Look at that. Beautiful. She floated over Mike into this. And grabbing Mickey James by the hair, bad mouthing her right in her face. It's almost like the. You know, it looks like Tara could care less about the win. He just wants to beat up, embarrass, and humiliate Mickey James. T-shirt says, hating me won't make you pretty. I couldn't make it out. It was all stretched out. I got you. I wonder why. Yeah, the referee trying to get Tara. Stop all the uh, illegal maneuvering. And I've got to agree with you, Taz. You talked about this match sort of being an extension, a continuation of the brawl that they had recently on Impact. And it was one of the craziest things we had ever seen involving uh, the TNA there. knockouts. Never ending, but look at, look at, look at, oh, look at Nikki. Over the top goes Tara. That head scissor. Nikki James, and she comes. Mickey James just blasted Tara right in the face. Now Tara rolled in and Mickey's gonna go to the top. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Look at that missile drop kick. Caught her great that time. Great extension of the legs. Uh, I tell you, Mickey's gotta try to follow up. I mean, Tara's in deep trouble here. Come on, Tara, she says, has her in her sights, goes for the spin kick. It looked like more of a, like a wheel kick. Oh, look at that. Oh, man. Good way to pull a groin. 
Oh, Coxus. Ooh. Complexion of this match quickly turns in favor of Tara after it looked like Mickey had Tara exactly where she wanted her. Yeah, that was a tremendous counter by Tara, but look at Mickey still fighting back. Cut off by the knee to the midsection. Another attempt at a snap suplex. This time, Mickey floats over, doubles her over with the knee. Wow, how strong. Wow. The power, the strength of Tara. Just overpowered whatever move that was going to be. It looked like maybe uh, some kind of a tornado style That's DDT. That's what it looked like she was going to do, but look at Cat. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Well, that's interesting. Wait a minute. Not opposed to it. You're used to being charged admission for something like this. Mike Sometimes. Right. <laughs> right now, both ladies in a very. Oh, oh my God! Oh, God. Dangerous too. Wow. That was not a pretty landing. That's where the danger aspect certainly comes into play. Well, you're not kidding. That, that, I didn't expect them both to fall off the top like that. I mean, it, and lucky, uh, I, I couldn't tell who hit the apron first, which hurts like hell. That is the hardest part of the ring, the apron. Look, I just, just like two Hellcats, man, just going right back at each other. Referee doing his best here, trying to give him a little extra leeway, but they've been battling outside on the floor. Yeah, referee is a long time. Eight. He's counting. He's trying to get control. Referee Jackson James, but good luck to him. <laughs> the hell are they going now? It's just. Whew. Wow. Uh, you can just smell it. They, 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 he's got it. The referee's going to have to count them out or something. I don't think it matters at this point. Both these ladies, that hatred, the disdain for each other. Man. Out of control on impact oh. and out of control tonight at turning point are Tara and Mickey James. You can hear how hard Mickey's body hit that that wall there. The referee, oh, referee got pushed back. Oh, well, you can't put your hand on official. Once that happens, he, he's giving these ladies a lot of leeway, and they don't care. They're not stopping. And I'm not sure that that bell is going to stop these two. No, that bell won't mean squat. You ring that damn thing all night. <laughs> Referee has thrown this match out. Got to presume like a double disqualification at this point. Hell, it could have been a double count out as well. Uh, you are, any way you want. I mean, and it's kind of even on who's. Oh, oh man. I don't know. I, I'll tell you what, folks. I don't know if that sound, that thought of Tara's face hitting resonates in your living rooms, but. Ooh. Man, did we hear it hit now, here, we just a couple of feet away from the whoa, broadcast whoa, whoa, table. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, God. Some of our Ooh. that broom right, right into the abs of oh, oh. snapped it right over. Mickey's back. Physicality. Oh, I don't think Mickey's done, buddy. Physicality. Uh, like, no. like we're not used to from the knockouts, but what we've come to expect from Tara and Mickey James. These are two tough. Hot-ass girls that are beating the snot out of each other, and I think it's badass. I'm telling you, this is cool. Ah, uh, let him go. Why stop him at this point? Let him go. Look at this. Let them fight is the chance. It's chaos, mayhem. From these two knockouts, Mickey James and Tara.
Stay back. Stay back. Stay back. Where's Mickey? Where's she heading up? Mickey probably wants to bring this thing in the ring. Yep. You're right on. But something tells me Tara's willing to oblige. Oh, here we go, oh, buddy. Here she goes. Bust through security. Hot do. <laughs> Yeah, drill him. That's awesome. Slacker. <laughs> well, they wanted to let him fight. We're going to let him fight some more. Oh, wait a minute. Looked like uh, Tara pulled a piece of... Oh, whoa. What? Whoa. Yeah, let him fight. Let him rip close. Nice headlock takedown. By Mickey. That's uh, TNA officials there, D'Lo Brown and Pat Kenny breaking this thing up. Why? I don't know. I never liked those guys anyway. Look at this tower. Relentless. Oh, let them go. Get out of the ring, boys. Come on, man. This thing is percolated, percolated to a new level of rage between these two knockouts. Ladies and gentlemen, nothing settled here before we oh, hear oh, 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 here we go oh, again. Oh. Let's stay with this. Check this out, man. Good call. When it comes to the personal issues, nothing settled between Mickey James and Tara. There comes a time in an athlete's career where you got to look at each other and you go, bro, what's left to do? We've conquered the world. We've conquered tag team wrestling. As of this very minute, Team 3D is officially retired. However, if we're going out, we want to go out with having one more match. Motor City Machine Guns, we're talking to you. There wouldn't be no tag team wrestling if it wasn't for a Team 3D. They've been everywhere, they've won every tag team title, and to be able to prove ourselves, I think this is the biggest test to prove that we really are the best tag team in the world. We looked at each other, you know, one day coming in and just pretty much said, what is there for us to accomplish? You know, we've done it all. You know, we can, can re repeat and repeat and repeat, but, what, what, what do we gain from it? You know, we don't gain anything. We've already proven, without a doubt, that we are the greatest tag team in the history of this business. Making a decision to retire is a hard decision, but it's actually a very easy decision. When you've done what we've done, you look in the mirror and you go, what else is gonna do? Okay, you're gonna become the 24-time champions. And then if you lose your belt, you're gonna become the 25-time. I mean, Nothing will ever be as special as the first. And, you know, it just, there's nothing left to do. At Turning Point, at the next pay-per-view, that's it. One more match for us. We're just waiting on an answer for you, from you guys. So, I mean, what's it, what's it going to be? They came out in peace, and they came out with a show of respect, and we gave them respect back. And you know what? I, I'm really looking forward to this. Why don't we take this to the people who want to see Team 3D and the Motor City Machine Guns one more time? This is where it's at, and if you're the TNA World Tag Team Champions, you're the best team in the world. They're definitely a threat to these titles. They definitely are the last of the living legend tag teams, you know? So for us to be able to hang with them, that just proves that in the future, we're going to be legends too. We've done it all. It's about time that we move on, and what better thing to do is to move on while we're on top. You know, you don't want to move on when you're down and decrepit and old and, you know, what have you. You want to move on when you're on top of the world, when you're when the last thing that the people see are you guys as fighting champions. In their final match, Team 3D challenges the Motor City Machine Guns for the TNA World Tag Team Championship. Well, I have to say, after watching that and standing with you guys right now, I'm sad. I'm sad. Bubba, you haven't always been the nicest to me, but I am a big fan of Team 3D. And really, last match? Yes, ma'am. 
know, uh, I think you just kind of smacked me in the face with reality. Yeah, this is, uh, this is it. I mean, uh, we've, we've done it all together. You know, 15 years ago, we stepped into this business and we wanted to become the greatest tag team that ever existed. And I think we did a pretty damn good job of it. 23 World Tag Team titles. We've been everywhere together. We've been around the world. We've been in the same hotels. We've been in the same cars. We've been in the same cities, the same arenas. I'm proud to say that we did it together. And tonight, we're gonna go out there and we're gonna do it one more time together. We're going out there and we're becoming the 24 time World Tag Team Champions and we are retiring in style. We're going out the same way we started together. Oh my brother! Testify! Yes, not only title match number two tonight at Turning Point, but also the final match of 3D's illustrious careers. Here we go to the taglines to preview our championship bout, our TNA Tag Team World Tag Team Champ match, which is up next. Here's the bullet points in anticipation of the title bout tonight. Chris Saban, Alex Shelley, they admitted Team 3D, the Trailblazers, who brought tag wrestling back into the spotlight. Regardless of the outcome of tonight's match, win, lose, or draw, 3D has made a promise, they've made a commitment that this is it. There's nothing left for them to prove as a team. Even with no other challenges to conquer, you know that Brother Ray, Brother Devon, they would like nothing more than to leave that positive, final, lasting impression and what would cement their reputation as the most decorated tag team more than anything than another title reign. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the TNA World Tag Team Championship. Introducing, first of all, from New York City, the most decorated tag team in wrestling history, Brother Ray and Brother Devon, Team 3-T. anymore, man. Our fans, you and I, Team 3D, walking that aisle together one more time. That's it. It's over after this, man. It's over. And now, introducing their opponents from the Motor City of Detroit, Michigan, Alex Shelley, Chris Saban, the TNA World Tag Team Champions, the Motor City Machine Gun. In terms of the pre-match interviews, for this Turning Point TNA World Tag Team title match, I love to see the mutual respect that was exhibited between these two teams, both champions and challengers alike. Yeah, but that's gonna end right now, buddy. Once the bell rings, I understand, I agree with you, but that, that's over with now. Right, I know Team 3D just about better than anybody, and I'm proud to say that. And I got to know the guns in my time here at TNA. And this is about retaining the championships and retiring Team 3D, if you're the guns. And this is about Brother Ray and Brother Devon winning the World Tag Team Championships for the 24th time and retiring as the champs. That's what it's about in the referee Brian Heffer's hands right there. I love the way that the guns framed this situation, Taz. They said it's going to be a matchup of the best tag team today versus the best tag team ever. And I, I think that's dead on. Motor City Machine Guns. And listen, the big story out in this match is it's the end of a, an amazing era, an amazing career, an amazing tag team run for the best tag team in the history of our business, Team 3D. 
the backdrop, in my opinion, all, should not be the champions. I I'll tell you, if I'm the guns, I want to go out and prove a damn point and win this match. Not just to retain my titles, but to retire the best. Resume for Team 3D, Brother Ray, Brother Devon, certainly unprecedented as we see that mutual respect that we had just talked about, shown there with the pre-match handshake between Alex Shelley, Brother Devon. 15 years as a team, 23 world championship reigns. Hey, we're, I mean, we're talking about ECW, WWE, WCW, oh, Japan, TNA, just... all throughout Japan, multiple promotions in the Orient. There's really nothing more for Brother Ray and Brother Devon to, to prove. And, and I, I get their point on that. I mean, I'm sad to see that they're, they're going to hang them up. I really am. I'm sad to see that. I'm sad to hear that. I'm sad to hear it. Uh, uh, but to me, I don't, I still, and I said it from the beginning of this whole issue with these two teams here, I don't know what the guns have to gain that much. I, I would not put my titles on the line against a team like Team 3D that can just win titles on them any time they want more. But if, if, if you want to be known as a fighting champion, Taz, and I know you've been in that position before, yeah. you, you really want to be the team that would duck no, a shot? I got one for you better, a little bit better than that, Mike. You know what's better than a fighting champion? Go ahead. A, a champion. champion. Yeah. Right. So that's that's my yeah. point on that. But you know what? We have it. Here it is. Awesome. This is going to be an awesome match. I'm going out here and saying that. I, I, you know, I think you would agree on that, Mike. Oh, no question. It's, you know, certainly one of the matches tonight that I've really been looking forward to at Turning Point. Shelly off the float over, able to catch Devon. First with the boot, and then sends him off into the ropes, but Devon goes airborne. Caught him that time. Swamp by Devon, high impact stuff right there. Goes for a quick cover, forcing Shelly to exert energy to kick out. And Alex Shelly, folks, he's got a lot of energy, man. <laughs> Taz, if, if time permits here in this matchup, if, if you at some point can explain the role that you played in helping formulate Team 3D originally some 15 plus years ago. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. it wasn't just myself. I mean, it was, uh, well, we'll get into that in a second. Here. Let's watch Chris Saban here. He's going to work. Devon's in trouble. Look at Shelly. Devon got himself out of harm's way. That's a veteran right there, buddy. Following up, taking out both members. And there goes Big Boy. Oh, look at that. Oh, 3D a little early. Saban put the brakes on, got out. Just that close, Saban shows Brother Ray. You almost had me, guys. Well, what, about 15 years ago, what, how Team 3D started, more or less. I mean, it was in Tampa, Florida at a live event when we were in ECW, and it, I was sitting there with Raven and Tommy Dreamer, and we were just joking around about the movie Slapshot. You know, there was the Hanson brothers. Sure. Those, those three brothers, they had, had the black lashes with no lenses, with the white tape on the nose thing. Remember and very well. We were just saying it'd be funny if there was a team like that in the wrestling business, and then well, we got Paul Heyman involved and things evolved. Right. The next thing you know, hey, Team 3D was invented. Then called the Dudley Boys, and then and, and you know what? It was uh, just amazing to see their careers and the success that Brother Ray and Brother Devon have had for so many years. Very proud of these guys. Look at that springboard. Oh, cross man. body, hit to perfection. Right on Brother Ray is saving for two. You know, you think back through the years as Saban gets the speed oh. going and gets cut off. Has there been anybody that's seen more Team 3D matches than you through the years? Uh, there's me. <laughs> yeah, I've seen a lot of them. I've even had to uh, compete against them, too, <laughs> which wasn't fun. Double team leads to a Devon cover, but Shelly in for the save. Yeah, you know, I think that with Devon, when he goes for those covers on uh, one member, there's a tag right there, but Shelly's legal. He tagged himself in, unbeknownst to uh, Devon. Brother Devon right there got dropped, toe hold. Watch, save it! Oh! Point to the elbow right in the spine. And with Devon's head exposed by Shelly, Saban with a drop kick right into the face. Well, the point I was going to make earlier about Brother Devon with those covers, he's putting all his weight 
on the, uh, you know, the smaller size machine guns when he goes for covers. It's a wear down tactic. Oh, sure as hell is. You're talking 300 pounds. Whoa, 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 watch out here. But 300 pounds that moves out of the way as Shelly went from the top and may have, may have hurt his knee on the way down. And uh, like oh, yeah, yeah. Brother, brother Ray is certainly going to take advantage of that. Hey, listen, look. You get somebody who injures themselves, you see there's a little opening, and, you, and he tweaks his knee, and right there, got his chin, his jaw, and the elbow with that arm bar while the leg is barred. Alan Shelley realizes he is not in a good place with uh, Brother Ray all over him right now. And watch this, oh man, oh my God! Tell you what. Well, the Ray almost ripped the leg right out of the socket of Alex Shelley. Nobody home with this big splash. And Shelley senses that it's time to get Saban in. Try and take some of the pressure off that leg. Still whips his partner to the corner. Saban with the flying forearm. Quick recovery by Shelley. Yeah, this is what you don't want if you're Brother Ray. You don't want the guns to start this rapid fire, high impact stuff that they're so, so well famous for. Hence why they're the champions. And that's exactly what they're throwing at Team 3D. Here comes Shelly, buddy. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Heard the impact as Brother Devon's back Whoa. went into the guardrail. And, oh, Saban goes slingshot on the other side of the ring. Well, yeah. Brother Ray, deceivingly, for such a large man, is extremely athletic and very quick. Telling you that from experience, that man is large. He takes up a lot of room, and he moves very quick. Oh. And he just moved very quick into the ring post. Face first. Saban getting out of the way just in the nick of time as Brother Ray goes right into the steel post, as Taz mentioned. And but all of a, all of a sudden, the, the, the guns who had the, the advantage. Brother Ray. Now they've got to get 3D back in the oh, ring. Split open. Yeah, not a surprise. The force, the velocity that he went head first into the steel post, and it has opened up the head of Brother Ray. Yeah, bro oh man, little Brother Ray's right across the forehead. And look at Alex Shelley, smart man, keep him in the middle of the ring, so don't keep him too close to his partner. Got to get vicious now. Got to defend your titles if you're the guns. And I wouldn't think that Motor City Machine Guns want to play a slugfest striking game with Team 3D, but the guns see the opening. Well, 3D would love that. Look at this, right? You ever wow. see this side of the machine guns? Sticking his finger right in a hole created by the ring post in Brother Ray's head. I like this. I like the side of the guns. Show, show that vicious side by Did any means necessary. You think the realization set in to Saban and Shelly? that they need to fight fire with fire in terms of this more, right. more violent, more physical, more power game of 3D. And you're in there defending your titles against a team, the most decorated team in the history of the industry, and they're trying to prove a point on the way out the door? Yep, got to pull out all the stops. Damn right, right buddy. Brother Ray is just, he is bleeding real bad. You could see the sense of urgency for Brother Ray to tag in Devon. Alex Shelley, smart, brings him over to his corner. Saban tags himself in. Frequent tags is the best friend right now of the champions. The basic tag team strategy that, well, Team 3D has used so well to gain their 23 reigns whoa, whoa, whoa. was momentarily used against them. You don't see Brother Ray go up to the ropes that often, and quickly it's Saban there to cut look him look off. Look at the blood. Oh, 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 my God. Bob a bomb. A desperation move yeah, but can't, by Brother Ray, but damn it, paid off. Yeah, huh? but sure as hell did, but can Brother Ray get Devon? Wait, 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 come, come, oh, come, come, oh. He had his arm draped across the chest. Again, the little nuances. Why? Brother Ray and Brother Devon, Team 3D, 23-time world champions. Brother Ray had the wherewithal to just drape his arm over for maybe a sneaky cover. And both Devon and Shelly are sitting on ready. Shelly's in, Shelly's close, legal. Close, close, Whoa. Wow. Can't get much closer than that. Nothing wrong with that, folks. You Alex Shelly eliminate the fresh man in Brother Devon. You got Brother Ray. Ooh, Ooh. man. 
Yeah. That'll buckle your knees a tad. Been there before, huh, Taz? Yep, not fun. Sucks. <laughs> Round kick to the chest. Man, I'll tell you, Alex Shelley. Brother Ray leaving the handprint on the chest of one half of the TNA World Tag Team Champs. Another round kick. That one caught Brother Ray to draw a bit. Another round kick. Brother Shelley daring him to hit him again. I don't like that strategy, Mr. Shelley. <laughs> but <laughs> I'll tip my hat. He's a tough son of a bitch <laughs> to take those chops. <laughs> well, it's a girl. Right to the back of the Those head. Those got him rocked, but he's still on his feet. Whoa, whoa. Got him. Wow, look at that. Shelly committed himself. Coming off the middle rope. Brother Ray has got to try to get his brother Devon in this match. Brother Ray not moving. Saban knows he needs Shelly to tag him. Tag team titles at stake. Brother Ray got that gaze in his face. Here comes Devon. And here comes Saban. And there goes Saban. Strikes by Devon. Countered. Wow, look at that by Saban, but then Devon comes right back and puts the shoulder block in. Side slam. Drives here him we straight go, here into we go, a here cover we go. for two. See how Brother Devon, no wasted motion, goes right back to Saban for his next offensive move, which didn't work. Saban got the boot up as Devon charged in, but then Saban goes right into the power slam. Gotta give up. Saban credit kicking out that short power slam, giving up a lot of body weight to Brother Devon. Oof. Drop down with the neck breaker. Devon again the cover and Shelly for the save. A little poke in the eye action. A little low road from the guns. Hey, you call it low road, I call it an effective road. You call it keeping that title by any means necessary, Damn right? Damn skippy hippie. Watch out! Oh. oh, got caught. Oh my god. Oh. 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 That's when you that's the that's, that's, that's the power, but it's one way to counter. The quick tactics of the guns. Oh my god. And this is an exhibition of the power game that we expect from 3D. Well, Powerful clothesline and then Devon to the top. Brother Devon's got to do it alone because Brother Ray's in a bad way on the apron. Flying headbutt. Here we go. Oh. His one, his two. Save us. Ooh. Brother Devon still got to keep this pressure on if he can. Finally, you can see on the apron, Brother Ray get, has gotten to a vertical base, kind of. That's I think that he takes himself he in. He did. Brother Ray's legal. Got a clothesline. Well, I don't know. I, I'm not too sure if, <laughs> if Devon wanted Bubba in because he knows his brother's not in good shape right now. He's gonna get it. He's hitting. Wow. <laughs> Powerful slam. Perfect positioning. Dead center in the middle. Pulling out all the trademark. Oh, 3D paraphernalia, baby. That's from page one of the playbook. Devon with the what's up after Brother Ray. One final time. I think the champions are in grave danger. This place is rocking. Brother Ray making brother Devon a legal man. Referee Brian Hebna trying to get some control. Good luck, buddy. Brother Ray stacking up the table in the corner. They're going to drive Saban right through this table, Mike. What the hell? Look at that. Holy crap. Oh! Brother Ray crashes and burns. God! Double super kick. Pin. They did it! 
Et t'es bon Wouah Mais la Dota vous êtes Gun set up for oh, the man. double team. Devon's on his own, buddy. Devon is all by him. Lonesome is lonesome. Shelly measures, hits the cross body off the top, saving the cover. Here we go, here's two. And just a second away. Look at the frustration in the eyes of Saban. Second away of Team 3D going out and loses. Look, brother, right not moving a bit, Mike, in that table. He's out. That enables the guns to put all their effort with the double team here on Devon. What the hell is this? Oh, nice counter. Back Shelly up into the corner, does Devon. Oh, oh, oh the don't see that much. Kick. Devon moves oh, out Mike, of the Mike, way. Mike, Mike, look, look. Here it is. 30. That's it, baby. It is one, two. New champs. What the heck? Ha has, has anybody ever kicked out of 3D? No. I mean, not, not, not for Fif not. 15 freaking years. I've never seen that. I, 3D can't believe it either. Look I on Devon's face. I, he, he kicked out. I cannot believe that. I have never, all these years, seen anyone kick out of 3D. Look, 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 look. The brother Ray, he's kind of Very like all discombobulated. He's just. I think it's 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 like it's taken him completely out of their game plan here. I mean, 15 well, that was it. years. That was the of point. The, you're right. 15 years of hitting the move. Oof. Saban DDT. Brother Ray leaves his feet. Misses with the elbow drop. He's oh, the oh my corner. God. Perfect execution of the super kick. Guns go for the double team again and out of the neck breaker from Saban. It's the close no. body by Shelly. Saban quick cover. Saban leg hook. Brother Ray shoulders are down. And the guns keep the title. The way to the match. And still, TNA World Tag Team Champions, the Mother City Machine Gun. God almighty, what a physical contest. I'll tell you, Motor City Machine Guns in a really tough spot here. Both teams, our fans enjoy both teams. The champions retain in very impressive fashion. Cannot believe they kicked out of freaking 3D. Team 3D, Mike. Done. No championships. It's over. Taz, we've got to go back. We've got to revisit some of the incredible match, match action here from our TNA World Tag Team title match. Take it. Oh, yeah, just, I mean, the, the, as we said, the physicality, the athleticism that was just unbelievable in this matchup. 3D right there. I mean, that's it. This that's the, the end of the match. That's the shocker right there. The I shoulder roll I can't three. believe that. And then it just seemed like Team 3D after that happened, Mike, was thrown off the game, as you said. And Brother Ray ends up getting defeated. The guns retain. Wow. Well, the mutual respect that these two teams had prior to tonight's TNA World Tag Title Match at Turning Point, it's still there. That was a battle. That was... That was what we expected it to be. I, 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 I don't know what to say. I mean, it's, it's the end. It's the end of an era, isn't it? Uh, an amazing uh, just career for this amazing team. They didn't get a championship for the 24th time, but 23 times, that's too shabby, everybody. You're gonna get beat? Get beat by the best. And Team 3D just got beat by the best. The guns. The great ride, boys. Great ride. Well, that's it. The last time we'll see Team 3D in the TNA ring. And Tommy Dreamer, you've had a long history with these boys. How do you feel about their departure? 
You know, myself, Taz, and Raven are the reason Team 3D got in this business. All they've accomplished, I've been so, so proud. Tonight is a sad night. EV2's fighting for their jobs, and two friends, myself and RVD, are fighting. It shouldn't happen. Congratulations, Bischoff. We're playing into exactly what you wanted. You're such a big man. Tonight, Rob, you're gonna find out who's BSing you and who's your true friend. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing, first of all, from Yonkers, New York, Tommy Dreamer. We heard Tommy Dreamer on Impact issue the challenge to Rob Van Dam. He said, at turning point, let's go old school. And RVD, Tommy Dreamer, we're gonna turn him loose tonight. We're gonna go EV2 style, anything goes. going on too i would be speculating i would be a little paranoid also and you know that that's what this match is about here I, again i don't think this is about obviously it's not about a championship there's not one on the line here I, it's not about money even though most matches are money's very important when you win you make more money when you lose you don't this match is about trust mike this match is i guess tommy trying to prove a point to van Dam that you should be trusting us in ev2 and whatnot and uh and not listen to the paranoia that's been stirred up by Eric Bischoff. Uh, there's a, you know, long friendship between these two men, as we know. That oh. schoolboy there. Yeah, quick roll up attempt by Dreamer. That low scissors by Van Dam. He's so quick with that when he catches you. A little standoff action there. And Taz, as you have referenced on many occasions when it comes to RVD's matches, the agility, of, of Van Dam, the flexibility, pretty much beyond compare as the two go nose to nose, but also that the lower body strength of RVD just really unparalleled. Yeah, no, Mike, I, I'm gonna hit on that in a second, but you can just see the emotions <laughs> between these two men here. These are two guys like brothers, and it's almost as if they don't wanna fight, but they're just banging it out anyway. And you can just see, it, it, it's not about trying to hurt the other guy, it's about trying to knock some sense into the other That's guy. What it is. Well scouted by Dreamer, anticipated the move by Van Dam. Bobby, what you're saying about Van Dam a moment ago is that little body strength, that strength in his hips and his glutes, his hamstrings, his quads. I mean, Van Dam can just blast you with a kick out of nowhere. Tommy's aware of that. You know, Tommy's aware of that, and Tommy, I'm sure, is going to have a pretty good defense against that. Normally, Dreamer would go out and have not be shy to move some furniture around with a guy and go crazy and fight amongst the uh, ringside area. But again, I think this is about let's settle it in the ring like brothers, like men. 
and fight it out. When it comes to Tommy Dreamer, anybody in professional wrestling have a bigger heart than Dreamer? No, uh, listen, I've had... I, I, can't, I can't even remember, tell you how many matches I've had against Tommy, and uh, uh, he is relentless. Uh, he is all hot, loaded, loaded with guts, as is Van Damme. Both these guys, I mean, I, ooh, ooh. I've always felt like toughness is, me is measured not by what you can do to a man, but how much punishment you can take from a man. And both these men have made careers on taking punishment and dishing it out. Tommy, bad intentions coming here, buddy. Look at that, look at the eyes of Dreamer. Totally focused on RVD, full speed ahead. Oh, oh, man. Wow, the impact of that clothesline combined with the impact of Van Dam, the back of his head well, coming down onto the floor. It's a very good thing that Van Dam's head hit that little that was close. flat mat that's all uh, that's separating the concrete, the Van Dam skull. That's a good thing he hit that mat. Otherwise, Van Dam's brains might be splattered all over that floor there. Well, I guess I was wrong about dreaming not bringing it to the outside. Huh? <laughs> Look at it again, the flexibility we talked about. Mm -hmm. It came full force right there from Van Dam with that front, that Straight up kick to Just the, the face. The, the yeah. quickness of that kick. Oh! Yeah, this is a typical Van Damme. He perches his opponent up there and just, uh, to do a maneuver, which is probably going to be a spinning leg drop. Yep, that's it. You've been there before too, haven't you? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> I mean, that's that's textbook. Van Damme and Dreamer was trying to get himself out of the way, but couldn't do it. You think back to all these distrust issues between Rob Van Dam and EB2. You almost have to, to factor in the original situation that Van Dam had with Jeff Hardy. I think from that point well, going yeah, that's forward, where it, started, yeah. it really is. From the point that, that Van Dam realized that he couldn't trust his friend Jeff Hardy, that level of paranoia, it's been easier for Eric Bischoff to, to play on it when it comes well, to getting inside I, the head I, of Van Damme. I, I don't think you can blame uh, Bischoff for, for playing on it. I think it's smart by Bischoff. It's about manipulation. It's about mind control. I mean, Immortal is in control. Bischoff, Flair, Hulk Hogan, obviously. They, they got the power, man. And they know how to control people's minds. But right now, Dreamer is definitely in a bad spot in a bad way. Lord knows what the hell Van Damme is going to do here. Referee Andrew Thomas trying to talk some sense into uh, into Rob. Gonna go slingshot. Ooh. My Dreamer slipped out of there. I think you're right. I think Dreamer may be one step ahead of him. Maybe but, he took too long in terms of playing to the crowd. Could be. I mean, you know, Tommy was playing possum a little bit. And he kind of slid out of the way and... Van Dam crashed and burned on that steel, steel chair on the apron. And when you limit the lower body strength of a Van Dam, which a move like that could certainly do, built up over the course of time, yeah. it becomes advantage dreamer. Oh, if you if you have an opportunity to take out, as you can see here, one of the limbs, one of the legs of Rob Van Dam, you have an opportunity maybe to win the match. But again, I, I don't know. I mean, look, I know both these guys obviously for a long time, very well and stuff. But I, I don't know how much, how important the win is. And, and the match, you, it's about winning the match, right? You go into the match, you want to win the match. But I, I, with this match here, I don't know if it's all about that. I really don't. I, I think you're saying that at the same point, certainly both guys want victories, but maybe Tommy Dreamer just wants to prove a point to Van Dam too. Yeah, I think that's uh, correct, and I think Van Dam. Well, well, good abdominal strength by Van Dam to get out of that tree of woe. And also get out of the way of the chair, which was planted right oh. in front of his face, but Dreamer says. Well, Dreamer's gonna listen. He's got a mean streak and a violent side. He's not called the innovator of violence for nothing. And Tommy's about to, oh. Again, Van Dam getting himself out of harm's way. And again. Dreamer catches him in the corner. Now going to pull him out from the corner. God, God. Drops him straight down. All off camera's great shot right there. That handheld shot of the impact of Van Damme's skull hitting that mat and the force that Dreamer drove him down with.
Got, Tommy, look, look. Yeah, got Van Dam in a position now that Dreamer obviously loves and decides that he's going to bring the ladder into play. Well, Tommy said on impact, right to Van Dam. We're going to settle this thing old school. That's right. So I guess <laughs> Tommy's going real old school. and That means EV2 style, right? Yes, sir. Might be going a little South Philly on him here. But you know, this this time right here that's taking Tommy to get this stuff together, whatever he's looking to do, Van Dam, it's giving him time to recoup. Yeah, this really is key. It's that recovery time for, for Van Dam, and I think Dreamer sensed it. Yeah, he sure did. That's why he kind of smart what he did. He grabbed Van Dam by his knee pad to pull him in. Van Dam got away and went baseball oh. slide and God. Dreamer ends up taking the ladder and smashing it right in Van Dam's face. I told you it was innovative. Look at the eyes of Rob Van Dam. Looks like he doesn't know where the hell he's at. It's cracked in the mush with a steel ladder. He just drags RVD in by the hair. And sets up in the corner for a bulldog into God. the ladder. Oh, God. You could hear the thud. Oh. Look at Van Damme's neck. Look at his head. Forget about the cover. Look at his neck, Mike. Stacked oh up on God. the ladder. He was just covered him while his head was contorted on, on the uh, side of the steel ladder. And now what? It's almost as as if v Dreamer doesn't want to do this. This, you know, uh, uh, the punishment he's dishing out on Van Dam. Well, maybe he does want to do it. Ooh, oh, man, right on the elbow. On the steel ladder, man, right on that elbow. God. Van Dam able to move out of the way. Dreamer caught that ladder. Ooh. RVD going to go roll. Roll. Oh, God. God. Dreamer going to try and capitalize. He went back first to the ladder. As a result, he goes immediately to the spine buster. And now. Yeah, you see how Van Damme's head whiplash, Mike. But right now, look at Dreamer here. Going to the top. Wow. He went frog splash on him. Look. That's exactly what he did. Not sure about the landing, however, but he. Looked, looked like he might have landed on his forearm. Yeah, on his arm. Got him. Tommy's favorite his elbow is, I'm, I'm sorry, not his elbow, his wrist or his, right. uh... Checking on the, he's taking off the fighting gloves. He might have, he might have popped a bone in his wrist or something. You know, when you land on that, on a splash like that, a lot of the force to protect yourself with all your weight on your opponent, lands on the mat on your, uh, on the inside of your wrist and, and your, your palm of your hand. Look at that Northern Lights suplex. Into the bridge, into excellent. the pin. Van Dam with an excellent Northern Lights suplex. Tommy able to break up the uh, bridge. And Dreamer is seriously. He might have broke his hand, Mike. Favoring the. Look at, his, look at that bone in his wrist. Oh my, look at that, he popped the God. bone. Oh my. Look at the close up, you could see the. We can get another shot, eh? You could see the bone. Look at oh. that, look at yeah, he popped his, he, he broke his hand. He bro broke his wrist, or his, I'm sorry, his wrist, not his hand. And look at that! Oh man, that's Van Dam for the for the cover, and it. It's like Van Dam was was hesitating because he saw the bone pop through the skin, but then Dreamer's fighting back. Kind of, kind of a position it puts Van Dam in, right? Yeah, well, he's, he's got to go defend on, himself. Sure. Yeah, you got to go on. Sure. Well, we, we referenced earlier the incredible guts, courage, and heart of oh, Tommy Dreamer, God. who gets slammed back first into the into the steel chair. And this might be the end of the party right here. Tommy's in. He's split like boots. Oh, oh, nobody there. Again, Van Dam crashes and burns earlier on that Rolling Thunder on the steel ladder. And now, with the split leg moonsault on the steel chair.
Dreamer just keeps grabbing at his wrist. He wasn't kidding when he said that they were going to go old school. Well, that's the wrist he's got to shoot him off with. Right? Oh, God. Fights through the pain to do so and send him off into the corner. Oh. And then boy, ends up getting the ladder right in the face, does Dreamer. Right in the side of the head, face area. That... Oh. Look at Dreamer. Looks like he fell out of a building. He's not moving a bit. Except for there. Whoa! Nobody home on that. Five-star frog splash. Can Dreamer capitalize on the frog splash miss? Oh, Stacks oh him God. up with the title driver right on the head. It looked like Van Dam just he got shot out of a cannon. Oh, the arm's under the ropes, ref. The arm is under the ropes. There you go. I mean, just, just Dreamer to be able to continue in this match. I would assume that With Immortal, the... Garrett Bischoff, he's got to be loving this right now. And I don't Why blame him. Uh, no, I, I don't blame him. <laughs> got to love everything about what he's witnessing here because he's the arsonist behind this. He's the one that lit the fire initially. Uh, that's he's a little the one that... That's a little harsh. Awesome. Not it's harsh. Not harsh. You're exaggerating. What are you talking about? It's exactly what we've seen. Right now, Dreamer, again, I, looks like Rob is trying to kick the ladder out of the way. What the hell is Tommy doing here? It's just dangerous here. How can he balance like that? Gonna try and suplex him out of the corner? I think that's exactly what Dreamer is gonna try to do here to Van Dam. Van Dam trying to fight him off here. Series of shots. Dan oh! Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, boy. Good God, that was bad. Oh, my, oh my oh. God, he's back! Look at his legs! Oh, God. Just cover him, Rob. Just pin him. Please. Ready. Just beat him. His shoulders are down. Just, just top him. Oh, my God. Oh! I think that might be it. Taz, I'm with you. I think that might be it. Cover him, please. Is he going to? Oh, five star again, and there. Oh, again, Tommy moves out of the way. Wow. And Dreamer. Had him up on the yeah, shoulders, not sure if he was going to go for uh, the driver or not. Maybe his back was affected yep. by... Oh, think. Whew. And again, back first into the ladder. Tommy Counter going to go DDT, oh. but instead, he gets sent back first into the steel chair again. Oh, how many times can he take those vicious blows to the back and five star oh. that time? Should do it too. Thankfully. The winner of the match, Rob Van Dam. Incredible level of physicality between these two. And I'm going to reference what you said earlier, Taz. Eric Bischoff, I'm sure, couldn't be happier. Yeah, totally agree. I mean, you gotta wonder, injury-wise, what's going on with Dreamer. It, uh, we saw a bone kind of popping out of his wrist, so we gotta assume he's got a broken wrist. Uh, I mean, this thing was so physical. Look at, look at his wrist. Uh, and again, like I said, I, I, you know, I don't, you can see Van Dam. It's not like he's running around celebrating on his victory. Almost as this is. You can tell, you can tell by his body language, right? Hey. I'm mad you're gonna stay. How long are you gonna stay mad at me? Yeah, I was one. Sorry.
Did you say I'm sorry? And the two embrace. Well, the one embraced. <laughs> well, true. Well, maybe Van Dam realized that it has been Bischoff all along messing with his head, fueling the paranoia. I'm surrounded by the men, the party, the excitement of the night, Fortune. And thank God, I mean, thank God, that what we just saw is over. Two guys in BB2 destroy each other. Who gives a damn? Now the show starts. Fortune goes to the ring, Fortune kicks ass, and I fire one of the members of BB2. Gentlemen, I know I've been cranky these last couple of weeks, but now I know it's all about the team. I'm behind Fortune 100%. You know it. You know it. Hey, you know what I say? I say we keep all of Fortune around and keep beating the piss out of them. I, I'm enjoying myself. Am I wrong? Am I the only one? I, 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 got, I got one better. How about we stack them all up in the middle of the ring, put that sloppy turd Raven on top, and get rid of all of them tonight? What do Either you think? Way. Either way, I like it. What do you think? Guys, you know, you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking that this pathetic little reunion of EV2 has been going on way too long. Tonight, I say we end it, fortune style. Throw it up. Throw it up. I think what the boys are saying is they're going to the ring on behalf of TNA and putting the show on, baby. And then after the show, you know what happens then, right? Fortune gets wild and crazy. Little girls like you fall to our knees. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you fortune. Woo! Woo! -woo, -woo. Turning point, EV2, fortune. There's the potential for someone in EV2 to get fired. EV2, if it isn't the epitome of dysfunction. Why don't you look at power, composure, strength, which makes the wrestling world go round. Not a bunch of dysfunctional punks like you. Yeah, someone's losing a job after the match at uh, Turning Point. It's obvious, you know, we're going out there to win because who wants to lose their job? It's uh, pretty concerning. Not exactly getting along right now either, as you can probably tell by, by watching Impact. Hey, you know what? I, I say kill each other. Do it. Get it over with. Nobody wants you here anyway. A lot of negativity, but I'm trying to tell everybody on the team, listen, we can do this. We can win. If we concentrate too much on losing, then we're going to lose. And then one of us, obviously, is going to be out of a job and not do what we all love to do. We don't bicker like EV2. We get in there, we fight like men. We're not going in this thing, you know, with losing in our mind. We're going to clear that from our mind. We're going to clear that from our vocabulary, and we're going to think one thing, when. It is kill or be killed. That's how things are done in the business world. That's how they're done in the wrestling business. When it comes to turning point, Fortune is worried about Fortune. All we have to do is win the match. All I have to do. The other guys can be considered to be weak links by anybody else. But all I have to do is pin a member of Fortune, and I save the entire team's jobs. It's what it's all about. Power and control. Fortune takes on EV2 in a tag team war. Will a member of EV2 get fired? Ray 
Saban, Sabu, Rhino, and Stevie Richards. And right there in that Jedi Knight type of costume is, I'm assuming, Brian Kendrick. You would assume correctly. Ten-man tag team matchup. Stipulations here. The most one-sided I think I may have ever seen in a wrestling match. One-sided? Did, did I stutter? Oh, I just thought maybe I didn't hear it. What do you mean one side? What's the what I mean one sided? Well, the stipulations to this match are well, let's just say Fortune were to lose the match. Right. Any ramifications for Ric Flair and company? No, sir. Didn't think so. Well, I mean, I don't hear any member of EV2 complaining about the stips. Well, about they, didn't the have a, they didn't have a choice. Well, they're not crying about it. I mean, you're kind of crying. About I'm just saying. It. However, if EV2. Loses this match, someone pins, someone submits, then someone is getting fired tonight from TNA. Well, and I can't believe how you, you don't sense the one sidedness of that stipulation. This match made by the new regime Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, oh, Eric Fisher. No, no, it's definitely one sided. I, I do see that, but I don't know why there's got to be a, you know, a big complaint about it. Ah. That's all I'm saying. Okay. It's five on five, right? Look at that. See that? Because they're just slap Kendrick. And here we go. We're off to the races. Well, good luck to Earl Hebner. You're not kidding. In trying to maintain some kind of balance, law, order. In a high stakes match that has started off with a volatile situation involving all 10 men. Well, obviously the pressure is on every member of EV2 in a huge way. And if I'm in EV2, I'm gonna try and get a victory as soon as I can to get this match over with and get that victory on one of the members of Fortune. Oh, gotta agree with you there. That has to be the game plan and strategy for all the members of EV2. We heard Stevie Richards say it. Pre-match is, oh, oh, God. Doug Williams just caught Kendrick in the leg. Took his took his knee right out. Perfection. Executed that low shoulder drive right into the knee of Kendrick. And Kendrick, man, he might not. Boy, he's he got a brace on that, on that knee. Well, we'll cover, 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 cover. Kendrick, Stevie's going to be gone. Covers. You almost just witnessed Stevie. Yeah, Richards fired with Robert Roode getting the pin and being the individual. Oh, look, look, I'm sorry, Mike. Look, Kendrick yeah, on right. the apron getting TNA trainer. trainer. Yeah. He might have blew that knee out, man. He might have popped a, 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 a tendon in his knee or a ligament. Could have popped the, uh, his kneecap. You never know. That was a nasty shot by Williams. Now, wait a minute. And the trainers, you can see the concern here. The trainer with security helping. Kendrick being removed Kendrick. from the ringside area, taken to the back. I was just watching. He kind of could put a little weight on it. I don't know how he couldn't stay out there. What do you mean? Oh, I'm just saying. He had, I don't know. I mean, you don't have a camera on it, but I watched him walk back, and he kind of was putting a little weight on the leg. Thinking the same thing. I don't think maybe he was uh, I, I don't getting know. himself out of the match. Nah, he wouldn't do that, so it wouldn't be fine. If, I don't know. Just speculating. Who knows? But now it's a five on four situation. Now, well, the deck e, now, just, now yeah. EV2, they not only have this one sided match when it comes to the stipulation, but now they're outnumbered here. Five on four. Oh, man. Not just that, Mike. Let's call a spade. Whoa, 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 watch this cover. Kazarian on top for two. Let's call the proverbial spade a spade. And I'm going to say it because it's the. Uh, you know, it's the big white elephant in the room here. Fortune is the younger, more stealth-like team here. EV2, they're more seasoned, they're more grizzled, they're older, they're more beat up. Let's face it. Cover again, as Williams takes it right to Stevie Richard. Right or wrong? Am I yeah. wrong? But you're right. You're right. Experience, that edge, would lie with the EV2 troops as the TV champ AJ Styles comes in and continues the assault on, on Stevie Richards. And we have seen three members of Fortune immediately come in on Richards and yeah. they continue to, to cut off the ring, keep Stevie over there. 
You know what I'm wondering here? They try to take him out right away. Oh, look at Kazarian wow. and AJ. Great double team. Leaks the Kazarian leg drop from the outside in and a two count again. Well, every pin attempt, yeah. every submission look, 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 attempt is so important in this match. How Kazarian's rolling Richards over to Fortune's corner. And it looks to me if we can get a shot of all of our Fortune's members, like, uh, I guess Douglas Williams didn't get the uh, the email on what color tights to wear. They're all wearing red except for Williams. Well, he's still got some red on the tights. Williams family crest. I know you're a big family crest guy. Huge. Oh. Love the crest. Right Neck now. Neck of Richards and we... We see Raven finally come in and break it up and Stevie Richards has had issues through the years with the head, with the neck as they snap it off the ropes and just continue wow. this assault, which is what it's been for several minutes. Two Look count by AJ off the suplex and right back on it. Look at that, how tenacious. They are, they are relentless, Ted. Right, and you're damn right. They should be. That's how you got to wrestle. And that's how it's got to get done. And let's face it. I mean, EV2, years back, and I was with them. They were relentless, too. They wrestled that way. I don't know. I'm just saying my opinion. Maybe a couple of years went by, and they're kind of off tilt a little bit. Setting up in the corner. Oh, there's Mock and Richards here. That's what it is. Yeah, the Stevie, Stevie kick. kick, right? Kazarian comes at Stevie oh, got Richards. Caught, got caught. Oh, and that's oh, yeah. one of Kazarian's yeah. moves. Kazarian mocking Stevie with the Stevie kick and yeah, ends up eating the canvas. And the Richards back, back to the future. Back, 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 back to the future. Was it the futures that's now? That's, that's, the, that's the call, that's right? That's the old days. Yeah. Frankie, the future, Kazarian. I'm glad you watched your, that model. Your home hey, I, it's on my first row. I like it. But that's War Rhino. Machine in. And Rhino, explosive nature of his offense, Ooh. is on display. Off the ropes with the clothesline. Running back elbow drops James Storm. Well, maybe I spoke too soon on Rhino. Rhino doesn't seem like he Rhino doesn't seem like Rhino does not seem like he lost a step one bit. He's on fire. Oh, man, wow. Williams went flying. Back body drop, double clothesline, whatever it takes. Storm planted with the well, belly to belly. This is the offense you need right here. This is going to keep. Is he going to go gore right here? Well, if he hits it. Storm, is he weakened sufficiently? Oh. From outside, I think it was Rude who hooked the leg. And that's the opening for AJ to go springboard with the flying elbow pin on top of, of Rhino for two from referee. Oh, man, Hepler. how close was that from Rhino being gone? Gone from TNA, man. Oh, God. That's the thing, man. If you're EVT, you really got to try and just keep offense flowing. Pick out somebody on that fortune side that you can single out and work as a unit. But at the same time, also do your best to not get trapped on their side of the ring. To me, that's going to be a key in terms of, well, of, yeah. of EV2's, let's just say, survival in this match. Yeah, well, I, listen, Mike, I said it a while ago, buddy. I said it a while ago when this whole thing started with EV2 and Fortune. I said that, you know, uh, uh, I really think EV2 making a mistake by, you know, tussling and getting involved with Fortune. Fortune is just, is, is a well oiled machine. That's the, I, I hate to use that cliche, but that's all I can. No, it fits. It fits it, you know. And then you factor in the numbers edge that they have at five on four since the. Not just that, Mike. Wait, wait, situation just, I was with interrupting Kendrick. while you were talking, what? Go right ahead. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, no, the thing is, like with Fortune, they have that, not just the, the, the youth, and the athletic ability and, and the legacy, the young legacy, but they have that confidence, man. You can sense the confidence in Fortune. They have the backing of Ric Flair. You think that confidence Hogan, comes from, Bishop. that's it, from the association with the regime that's in charge. I mean, that's, that's got to give you confidence yeah, yeah, right off the bat. Then we factor in Hogan, Bischoff, and Flair. Mm. Well, I also think the confidence comes from having, knowing your abilities. They believe, they know it's their time. Fortune knows, Beer Money knows it. You know, Douglas Williams knows it. AJ Styles knows it. Kazarian, none of these men have a confidence problem. True. And that's why they're successful. 
And that's exactly what Sabu was, and Richards, and Raven, and Rhino. You say it in the past tense. Well, but for some of them, I do mean it in the past tense. Not for, not for all members of EV2, but for some, I do. I do mean that. That's my opinion. I'm entitled to. I'll take my ball and go home. <laughs> Storm continues the beat down on the war machine. And now, oh, now Rhino, Rhino's been in the ring here for several minutes. Sure has. He started off with Stevie Richards. Finally, he gets a break. But now Rhino, after the quick burst, the well, quick explosive offense, now he's been taking a beating. You're right, Mike. And, and Rhino is the largest, the heaviest member of EV2, which is going to take a toll oh! from a cardiovascular standpoint and just got cracked in the back of the head. By Storm. Storm gonna try and that Rhino might be gone, buddy. The pin here gets two and just on the verge of eliminating Rhino from the TNA roster. Boy, there is just no let up in fortune at all. Storm motions to his tag partners that he's gonna finish off Rhino, but well, Rhino's whoa, whoa, got whoa, something whoa. to say about that. Power right there in the war machine. Rhino's got to try and get over to his corner and make a tag. Rhino with that fall away style slam takes Storm down. Storm going to get a fresh member of Fortune in in AJ Styles, who is met by Sabu. Sabu bringing it now, dropping Fortune members left and right. Well, Sabu's fresh at this point. This is his flurry. Raven feeding, feeding Sabu a chair. This is vintage right here. Vintage Sabu. Springboard right there, man, taking out three members of Fortune. Look at AJ. Oh! Raven cutting down AJ. Yeah. Cut off from outside by Raven. Sabu, series of shots. Gonna try and suplex AJ in, who fights Sabu off. AJ lands on the apron. Oh, decides to go springboard. Wow. 450. Amazing. Roll through. Is that too much? Oh, oh. that DDT by Sabu. Hit the cover. Here's two. And it's this time it's Douglas Williams in to break up the pin attempt. Williams now goes to the top. Uncorks that. European uppercut oh, slam shot, but then the God. Stevie kick. Oh, man. Williams got cracked. Look at that. Kazarian drops Stevie Richards on his head. Raven goes even flow DDT. But then Beer Money in for the double team on Raven. Raven's going to be done. Raven's going to be gone. You can sense it. Wait a minute. Rhino in the back door. Rhino, Rhino in the back door. Goes for the door. Oh, God, did he hit Rue. But then he gets caught by the last call super kick Ooh. from Storm. Sabu in. Steel chair to the face of Storm. Yeah, I don't think the referee even saw that steel chair. How quick Sabu utilized it. Look at AJ just shutting down Sabu. Oh, Sabu's got other thoughts. AJ crotched in the corner. Sabu headed up. Going for try that and snap it up. Oh my god, he got caught. Oh, the no way. Styles AJ gonna go flash. Oh, there it is. Amazing. Styles clash. Amazing. Sabu rolled over. Hendrick counts one. Hendrick counts two. And three. And Sabu has lost the match and he's gone from TNA. The winners of the match. Fortune. Wow. Just like that, we, we just witnessed it. Sabu done. Gone. Hey, I'll tell you what, no shame for EV2. That, that, was, that was a very physical matchup between these two factions. Sabu just got caught with that Styles pitch. He got counted. It looked like he was going for that Frankenstein. Up. And AJ just with a tremendous counter. In wow. Well, at least they're saying goodbye. I mean, you know. Many years as you work with him, with who? you're going to put them up with Sabu. 
Oh, it's been, well, what does that have to do with it? That, that you're going to mock the I'm fact that they're saying goodbye? I, I think it's horrible that, that, that Sabu lost this match and that it's leaving TNA. Ladies and gentlemen. Baby, go! Baby, go! Baby, go! Baby, go! <coughs> let's, let's pay homage. We all pay homage to fortune. We all bow down to fortune. We all thank God that fortune's here. <coughs> now, I had, I had a saying years ago, it used to be, mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest of them all? And of course, I would say nature boy. In this case, one of you fools it's going to lose the favor of fortune tonight. Y'all look at each other. Look at each other for the last time. Because Sabu, I didn't like the Sheik. I hated the Sheik, and I hate you. You're out of here. You're out of here. Sabu, you're out of here. Woo! And in the weeks to come, the other three will be gone. Well, Flair referencing the, yeah, the legendary whoa, 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 whoa. Sheik, the uncle of Sabu. You're out of here, brother. Goodbye, Sabu. Bye-bye, Sabu. Goodbye, Sabu. Good riddance to you. Woo! Once again, TNA, bow down to fortune. Learn to love it because it's the best thing going today. You guys have an ass kissing session. We got a party to go to. Well, Tommy Dreamer and Rob Van Dam have come out to say their goodbyes as the. Ooh. Look on the face of Rhino tells quite a story, doesn't it? Yeah, he's hot. You can just tell he's just he's, he's fuming. Sabu, Sabu, this sucks, and everybody here knows this sucks. Hey, you did great here. You always do. TNA saying goodbye to you is evidence that what RVD wants sometimes just ain't good enough. Hey. If there was ever a person who deserved to be a multi-millionaire for what he put his body through for each and every one of you, every scar on this man's body was for everyone that saw him perform inside this ring. And you could tell your children and you could tell your grandchildren that you saw the homicidal, suicidal, genocidal Sabu inside a ring doing what he loves. Sabu, thank you so much. I love you, bro. You've got your congregation. Please introduce us. Chris said, first thing, first sweet thing, I got to tell you that it's a mighty fine thing to go into a hostile situation and be surrounded by your family and, more importantly, your blood. Pope made one phone call, one phone call to a member of the congregation, and the rest of the flock followed. I mean, look what stands behind Pope, sugar. Pope has... Moses over here. Pope has Alonzo, Dazzolo, Mike, Mike, Pooh Bell, Jim Bob, Demel, and hell. I even brought my very own blood, my brother, Kevin K. Burke. Now, I want to make this thing perfectly clear. I hadn't given too much thought 
into the muster. But it was only until Pope went and took a piss that he realized exactly what he was. Because the monster abyss is nothing more than a piss stain on the carpet of TNA's foundation. And much like any good carpenter, Pope's going to be the one that's going to remove that stain from the foundation of TNA. You know, Papa Pope always taught me one thing, sugar. You know what he said? What? Of course you know. This is what he said. He said it's better to be pissed off than to be pissed on. And tonight, Abyss, I got to tell you, Pope is pissed. Now, Chrissy, baby, you and I, we, what the hell? What the hell is right? That's what hey, the Pope said. Hey, hey, that's hardcore country. Tara and Mickey there, James, man. they're hey, back at it, it again. Hey, yo, hey, hey, she's out of here. Let's get this thing going. Now they go. Come on, guys. Get out of here. Get out of here. Do you want to be here? Get out of here. Get out of here. Madison, yeah, Madison, right now. I think from behind. Dropped Mickey James in the, the knockout champ. Ash and Sting walking away from this situation. It sort of leaves the Pope as the last man standing. Pope intends to fight this fight. Even if I gotta fight it by myself. I'm gonna take that six foot seven, 350 pound. Straight back to hell. Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff have instructed me to extinguish the Pope D'Angelo De Niro. As for all the pathetic and ignorant sheep that can prize your congregation, you too are no longer safe. match, the lumberjacks surrounding the ring will be all the Pope's congregation. You see, what those four people got is just a taste of what I have to offer. He's taking people that has nothing to do of the issue between himself and Pope, and he's tried to, he's tried to frighten them, if you will. He's tried to take them to a nightmarish place, so where they will look at him as an immortal monster. You understand where Pope's coming from? Rest assured, we got something big about to pop off here. A turning point, I am going to annihilate the Pope, and I am going to extinguish the congregation all in one night, one by one. <laughs> Battles the Pope and his congregation in the Lumberjack. Following contest is a Lumberjack match. Introducing, first of all, making its way to the ring, weighing in excess of 350 pounds, is the Monster! When Abyss enters the impact zone, we've seen the physical, the unprovoked attacks on the defenseless fans by Abyss, the members of the Pope's congregation. It's led us to this lumberjack match where the Pope's recruited the congregation members, even including his own brother. Yeah, yeah, no, I know, Mike, and I. The good news is Abyss is not out here with Janice, that destructive, sick weapon that he usually comes out here with. Yeah, I don't, you know, I don't know if, uh, looking at that interview with Christy and stuff and Pope and his congregation, I get a funny feeling that, uh, I don't think a business is 
be able to manhandle any of the congregation members. The Pope, his tapes are, I'm sorry, his tapes, his ribs are taped up. And that's when he was in that casket and Abyss just violently attacked it with Janice. Still seeing the effects around the uh, rib cage area. And the Pope gets stopped directly in his tracks. Basically a lumberjack congregation type deal here. You know, I mean, the rules are Ooh. basically once, uh, Oh, man, with well, that kick. Yeah, never man, goes who, out who, to the outside. Just like back this. In. Rules are going to come into play right now. And Abyss... <laughs> I think Abyss decided that well, maybe he should get in the ring with the Pope instead of those six yeah. members of the congregation outside. And no, no, no. They're lumberjack. The congregation's lumberjack. But something tells me those fellas on the outside, they never actually did any lumberjacking. I don't pitch them in the forest cutting down trees. You? Wearing the flannel shirt? They might have done some hunting. The South Brooklyn, we have certain types of nothing. Like. Check. Oof. Pope goes airborne. Catches Abyss in the corner. Got him set up one more time. Oh, those ribs. That, I, I was thinking maybe it would affect Pope's ribs. He just went in full force, but. Fighting through the pain, if anything, at all. Whoa, look at that. He gets <laughs> tossed out by Abyss. And, Congregation members, yeah, including his brother Kevin. It's like a pal from up above. Congregation, can I get an amen? Here he goes, sunset flip in from outside. Oh, he went for the sit down splash at 350 plus. Pope stays ahead of him. Quickly to the top. Yeah, Pope definitely quickly. Here comes Pope. Look at that flying clothesline. Knocking a bit. Good. You don't see that Cover much. Two. You don't see Abyss getting knocked off of a vertical base too often. Pope lit him up. Whoa! This time the clothesline has the the force of, of the of running Pope oh, D'Angelo oh, oh, oh. De Niro congregation. There goes the lumberjack, the congregation lumberjack, and Abyss. You got nowhere to go. Man, the red shirt right there, that's Kevin K Dog right there. That's the brother. Blood brother of the Pope. Pope is both pimping and pissed, as he said earlier. But he gets caught by the big boot from the monster. And now this is this is what Abyss wants. Stop that that yeah. offensive. Slow assault. it down. Slow, Slow it down. down. Slow and, it down. And use. Right. The, what would you say, 100 plus pound weight advantage? I think that's, uh, I don't think that's an exaggeration. I think you're dead on. And obviously, because of the members of the congregation on the outside, Abyss has got to keep this thing in the ring. Don't go outside at all. You're outnumbered. 
And Abyss is tearing at the protective wrap. The taped ribs of the Pope now exposed. Yeah, well, body shots right there to us. To the Pope. I don't know how protective, how, how much protection, I should say, that that thick ace bandage was giving up. Uh, the Pope probably was giving him just some support to help his breathing. Without that now, it's going to be difficult for the Pope. You know, keep breathing properly. You have a rib injury, that's what happens. It's very difficult to breathe. Especially when you got a monster kicking in the ribs. You see how the Pope came out of the corner and the two butted heads oh, momentarily rocked Abyss, who comes right back with the offense. Back first into the corner, and Abyss going to get oh, that Pope, head of yeah. steam. Pope's a sitting duck. He's a sitting duck. Oh, my God. Man, it just squashed him right in the corner. Members of the congregation on the outside trying to get our live audience into this thing here to get to get Pope going. Give him that uh, extra oomph, but I don't think it's going to matter much. I mean, Abyss is just in com complete control. Talk about a guy with confidence. And what better move to yeah, use at this yeah. point when you've got the the previously injured ribs than to go to, to a move like the bear hug here and just continue to try and, and just squeeze the life right out of the Pope D'Angelo De Niro. And there's nothing that any of the members on the outside of the congregation, both boys, there's nothing that they can do for the Pope. A couple of shots with the elbow to the top of the head, that, that'll ring your bell. Again, it is just too big and strong is Abyss. Just caught the Pope in midair, man. Seems to have an answer for pretty much everything that the Pope has thrown at him to this point. Counter after counter. Congregation of the crowd. Hope they don't break the ring. Firmly behind D'Angelo De Niro, who tries to feed off the crowd reaction. Gets a couple of elbows yeah. in and then, then a knee right, yeah. right to the rib, to the gut with the knee. Whoa! Oh, what whoa. a counter at that. Yeah. Oh, no black hole instead of float over DDT. Yeah, excellent counter. The black hole slam by the Pope into the DDT. Well, turning point in the match, pun intended. <laughs> this is turning point. Nicely done. Pope now got to try and get to his feet before the big monster. Congregation trying to motivate the Pope. Both men up at the same time. Pope gets the first strikes in. Forearms are right there. Oh, Ooh, man. Had some extra oomph behind that yeah, one, didn't he? that was nasty. That was nasty. As was the clothesline by the Pope. Wow. wow. How yeah. That's impressive. Inverted atomic drive. Takes the big man down again. Caught him with the shoulder block and now almost daring Abyss to get back up to his feet. Monster up, swing and a miss. Pope connecting and... Well, it's impressive Pope can do all this here and mount this sort of a comeback with those injured ribs. Fighting through the pain. Rights and lefts and now piston like rapid rights, one after the other with Abyss down. See, now Pope, maybe the adrenaline rush was enough yeah. from the mouth to get that offense going, but you can see yeah, he's he was yeah. favoring his midsection and his ribs look, as he went to the corner. Look at Abyss, Mike, he's not moving. Oh. Oh. Drop down with the elbow, pin, two. Starting to sense this, some 
That's some frustration on the part of D'Angelo De Niro right there. Uh, he's in pain. He's, you know, he's feeling some pain right now in his ribs, and it's tough to think sometimes when you have that pain. You can't breathe. And we're in there with a monster. There's the size and strength edge. As the poke goes to the corner, and now oh my God. he's got him up. Going to try and catch he's him done. with the shock treatment done. backbreaker. Done. Caught. Done. Shock treatment by Abyss. Especially with the rib, uh, the rib situation that Pope has. If Abyss can cover, this match is over. In my view, this thing is done. Lays back on top for the pin. Wow. And, and no only got two, says the referee. It was the way that Abyss just laid back on that cover. That, well, that was the opening for the Pope to get the, well, the, rolled, the shoulder he, he up. He rolled the shoulder up. I'm surprised he was able to do it, but Pope's showing a lot of uh, toughness and heart. Almost instinctual at that point. Yeah, I would assume. Pope turns right in to a bisque goozle and attempted a choke slam. Pope floats over, doubles him over, and the right. shot takes yeah. Abyss out to the floor, and now the congregation gets involved again. Well, look at this. Hey, hey look at Pope. Look at Pope up here. Oh, oh man. Whew. And again, it's one of those moves. That it, it looks great for the Pope. You take Abyss down, but at the same time, oh, yeah, yeah, further damage to the ribs. Brother, uh, we get a shot right there. Kevin, K-Dog, helping up his brother. The Pope. Yeah, Abyss already rolled into the ring. Congregation says to the Pope, finish him off. Boy, you got to give this guy courage. He's going to go high oh, risk yeah. again with those bad ribs. Look at Abyss. Abyss is just sitting there, laying there. He's going to get, he's going to get splatted here. Oh! Like that headbutt. It looked like it hit the ribs, right, Mike? Of Abyss. Look at it looked like, like diving headbutt off the top. Here's the cover by the Pope. Two and no. Boy, this big man, close. This big man has just been impossible to put away. But what does he have left to no, hit him with? Look, Abyss doesn't want to let down Eric Bischoff or Ric Flair or Hulk Hogan. I, I get it. Elbows. Boots. Punches, chops, oh, throws everything Very, at yeah. him. Finally got the monster down at a point where maybe he can put him away. Yeah, well, Pope, Pope looking good right there. Congregation giving him some nuts. Done. Good job, man. Oh, what, 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 what are they point? It's Eric Bischoff. What are you doing out here? Oh, wait! It's his brother! Oh, oh, man. Oh, my God. Just judging by Bischoff's actions, judging by what we just saw from the congregation, you draw the same conclusion I am? Yeah, yeah. They, they, kept, making the money, they kept making the money sign. Bischoff did it to the... Oh, genius. Oh, my God. It's a genius move. His own brother... Hulk's own brother hits him from behind? Turns on him and feeds him to the big bad wolf. Uh, we, we talked earlier about how the Pope was that man on an island, the one fighting the good fight. Whoa. And that's certainly the case tonight as Abyss hits the black hole slam. And there you see the three count because of Eric Bischoff. The winner of the match, the monster of Paris. Wow, I guess it's all about the coin. The K-Dog, the blood brother of the Pope and the rest of the congregation.
Sabu's being fired. We're going to see if we can get a word with him right now. Sabu? Can, can, we, can we get a word with Sabu? Just really no, quick. no. Sabu doesn't have anything to say to anybody right now. But you know what I do, Christy? I have something to say to every single member of Fortune. You guys think you're big men. You think you came in and you can just run TNA. Big men on campus. And especially you, AJ Styles. You claim to be the leader of that group. Well, that's fine, because Stevie Richards is tired of sitting on the sidelines. I'm tired of breaking up fights between fellow EV2 members. Now I'm stepping up. I'm stepping in your face, AJ Styles, and I challenge you to a match. One-on-one, -on -one, Stevie Richards versus AJ Styles this Thursday on Impact. At Bound for Glory, the TNA founder, Jeff Jarrett, turned his back on his tag team partner, Samoa Joe, to join Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff in Immortal and became virtually unstoppable. I didn't sell out. I've never sold out in my life. I've got integrity and I stand for what I believe in. And there came a time, uh, as far as buying in, uh, like I said last week, Hogan, Bischoff, Jarrett, Hardy, Abyss, we all bring something very unique to the table and collectively, we are what's best for TNA. Listen, I've, I've never carried a true friend of this company since I've been here. So I've only been here for one thing, to be the best. You know, all I've ever asked for was just a inkling of an opportunity to be the best. You see, guys like Jeff will never give that to me because they know that's too powerful a thing. They know that I, what I'll do with that opportunity, what I'll do with that inkling of an infinitesimal opportunity. I'll make world champions. I'll make legends. He's just protected the spot like he always is. Jeff's the creator of, of TNA. So he deserves this just as much as I do. Just step up and say, we are the man, we are this company, and we take everything we want. Two weeks ago, Jeff Jarrett took out the Samoan submission machine by dropping him from the stage to the floor far below. You know, when I said I was actively hunting him, I was not kidding around. You know, I've been to your house. I've jumped over your picket fence. I've pet your pets. I've looked in your windows. He thinks that he's okay and everything's all right, that you planned for every contingency, and bam! You haven't. You haven't planned for every contingency. You haven't planned for me. You know what? Uh, uh, th th that's the definition between an amateur and a pro, in my opinion. He can uh, he can show up and kick my ass. You know, I I've said it a thousand times about Joe. His his strongest attribute is sometimes his biggest weakness. That, that he, he he wears his heart on a sleeve, but it's like a little kid throwing a temper tantrum. Uh, at the end of the day, they calm down for the temper tantrum. And you spank them on their butt, and they go on about their way. He he may just get a little butt with him Sunday. DNA founder Jeff Jarrett looks to survive against the Samoan submission machine, Samoa Joe. Making his way to the ring from Hendersonville, Tennessee, weighing in at 234 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. Jared gave you some luck, yeah, buddy. I'm sure that goes back to the situation between Jeff Jarrett, Samoa Joe. The path of destruction, it started with Kurt Angle. It went to Samoa Joe. Jeff Jarrett will tell you that he never sold out, that he bought in when it came to joining Immortal. But you have seen since Jarrett became 
a part of the Hogan Bischoff Flair regime, but his confidence level has risen, and he will do anything, anything within his power and ability to show that he belongs with that new regime. Kurt Angle, Samoa Joe, they have both felt it in recent weeks. On 10, 10, 10 at Bound for Glory, the Immortals were revealed. And for the past 28 days, we have led a path of destruction and taken down everybody that got in our way. And tonight, Samoa Joe, the founder is going to finish you off. And as far as this, I sold out crap. I'm sick and tired of hearing it. Because the truth of the matter is, me, Bischoff, Hogan, Hardy, the entire crew of Fortune, we all bought in. We all bought in and we're taking back control of this company. I told you I was sick and tired of hearing it. I'm walking to the back. I'm getting with Bischoff. And we will shut this entire show down and you will never see Jeff Hardy tonight. I'm sick of it. For the power play? Well, I mean, hey, listen, Jeff Jarrett. I mean, they do have that kind of yeah, power he has, that, he has that line of communication with Eric Bischoff to shut this down. Well, on second thought. that we've seen from the TNA founder since he joined Immortal. I gotta tell you real quick, I, I don't think that Jeff Jarrett or anybody else, Jeff Hardy, the TNA world champion, I don't think they sold out. I agree, I think they sold in. I really do. I mean, if you're buying into something like that, you, how are you selling out? I don't get I mean, that. I mean, you know, Taz, you've been here for a little over a year, and, and I see where maybe you would come to that conclusion. But if you've been here like I have from the start of this organization for over eight years, and you know what Jeff Jarrett has meant, and you know what the TNA founder has asked the employees to do, to work together as a group, to be united in, in bringing this company together and making it a force in professional wrestling, and when you've when you've heard that how for eight years. Was that? How long ago was that? I mean, how long ago was that, though? What do you mean, how? It's been continuous. It's been eight years that Jeff Jarrett has asked that. So okay. for him to turn his back on everybody that has been here and has supported him, it's disgraceful, in my opinion. Okay, you're, it's your opinion, you're entitled to it. I guess because you've worked here longer than me, you have a stronger opinion about it. Well, right now, Samoa Joe snapped Mary on his way out of that. Oh, oh what? Quick roll up. You see, uh, I would say that quickness is probably advantage Jarrett, but you never know what Joe. He is very deceiving, as you can see right there, and running high knee. Ooh, that was nasty, buddy. <laughs> and as Jarrett gets to his feet, Joe connects. He's got that great striking power. and Kidneys, kidneys, well, that's man. That's exactly where he's focused on. 
level of concentration of the Samoan submission machine. Working on the lower back, the kidney area of the TNA founder. And oh, oh Jarrett gets man. rocked in the corner. And you can see, as you said, payback. I mean, let's face it, I mean, you have Jarrett chucking Samoa Joe over our staging area and splat down to the ground. I mean, looking that Joe didn't get hurt more seriously than he did. It's just disrespecting, punking out Jeff Jarrett. And look at Jarrett answering with a big right hand. And Jarrett now using the ring ropes as his ally, taking Joe's eyes, I believe, raking him across the ropes. And explosive move by the Samoan submission machine right there. That primal scream of Samoa Joe, how fleet footed he is for such a large man. And the intensity in that back elbow. Look at Samoa Joe now just teeing off on Jeff Jarrett. And Jarrett gets right back up to his base. Turns Joe into the corner. And shoulder block after shoulder block. And I think it's interesting here that, that Jared is trying to match Joe when it comes to physicality. Oh, whoa, oh my whoa. God. <laughs> Man. Well, Jared's chops, it's almost like not affecting Joe. But you can't say the same for Joe's, can you? Wow. Oh, that concave, the Holy chest in. crap. Oh, just tap out <laughs> at this point. This chest gonna be like raw meat. What was that? Two dozen chops? Wow. Jarrett Consummate Pro going for. Ankle lock? Yeah. Interesting. It, it, you know, I've, I've just been watching Jarrett, the style of the match that we've seen from him, and it's it, it's it's a different style. Well, let's see. Mike, who uses the ankle lock? Trying to match the physicality of Joe, and then what? Well, who uses yeah, the you ankle lock? Well angle. Thank you. That's that's what I think that was. That's, that's a message I'm sure right there. It was. You know, a lot of people, Taz, have brought up the fact that that when when Jarrett attacked Kurt Angle, that you were right there to, to, to ensure that Angle didn't receive any further punishment, but not the same story when it came to Samoa Joe. Well, yeah, and you know, the reason is it's simple. I mean, I, I know the neck issues for years that Kurt Angle has had. And, and I, I've known Kurt for many, many years. Uh, and, and I no, I didn't want to see Jarrett do something to Kurt that was going to put Kurt out of, uh, out of ever competing again. Uh, 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 me being a guy who, who broke his neck also. So. Right, something you can relate yeah, to. No. I got you. Wow. But Samoa Joe's a little That's different. That's the clothesline. Leaks to the pin. Here's the cover for two. No. Of course, my history with Samoa Joe, it doesn't date back as long as it did with Kurt Angle. But, I mean, Joe don't have the uh, physical issues that Kurt has with his neck and whatnot. So, and it's not as personal between, in my opinion, Jarrett and Samoa Joe as it is with Jarrett and Kurt Angle. And if you get what I'm saying, you get it. If you don't, you don't. Gotcha. Joe off the ropes. The striking power. Been amazing. Oh, man. Backsplash. Pin. Just does that backsplash. It's got to be like a small foreign car. Just, just bam. bam. Right on top of you. Jarrett brought back up to his feet by Joe. And Jeff tries to fight it off. Does successfully with the elbows. No stroke. Calls the referee over to cover quick. Two. Whew. It's almost as, as if Jarrett was calling the ref over even before he hit the move. He wanted that cover quick. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. An exploder right there. Version of a T-ball suplex that exploded suplex. But that high collar tie, crotch into a back suplex. Gonna try and position Jared up in the corner. 
Could it be the chance here for the muscle buster? No. Could be, Joe, headed up into the corner. Oh, man. Jarrett. Jarrett realizes that fighting his way out of this thing, raking eyes. Hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. Ooh! And that's effective. Straight down, the drop to the floor by Jarrett. Joe's neck snaps across the top steel cable. And Jeff immediately back in on the offense. He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna try and maybe hit the stroke from up there. Yeah, from that's the middle exactly right. Mike, look at this! Yeah. Jarrett that, says it's over. It's finished. It. Hebner counts two, but not three. Jeff Jarrett kind of in disbelief. He can't believe it. He thought it was three. Referee Brian Hebner going off right now. Telling Jarrett, use that chair, you're getting disqualified. Meanwhile, Joe regroups. Oh my God, oh my God. Oh man! Elbow suicide, the suicide dive with the flying forearm and the elbow at the same time. And not only Jarrett taken out, but referee Brian Hebner at the same time. Inadvertently, referee got cracked. Jarrett tries to escape, but Joe's right on him in the corner. Yeah, Joe just, he's got Jarrett. Yeah, right real in a run. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's, that's Murphy and Gunner. That's the goons. Hogan and Bischoff security force. Oh my God, look at this, look at this, Mike. Muscle Buster coming. Referee Brian Hebner still out. We need a referee out here or something. It's Jarrett got. He's got that. Oh, he's, he's got, nightstick. Yeah, he's got the nightstick, the belly club that, that security brought down. Clipped the back of Joe's knee. <laughs> oh! God. It's the common denominator. It's that same thread. Every time that Jarrett does the damage, first Kurt Angle and then Samoa Joe. He had the, the, the help of Murphy and Gunner. Look, 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 look at this. this. A choke. What? Right across the esophagus. It's like, it's like he's trying to choke Joe out. Oh, you talked about the that. message that he was sending to Kurt Angle earlier. It's a message to Samoa Joe. It's a version of Joe's rear naked choke, but with the billy club, the nightstick across the esophagus. Joe's out, man. He's, he's defenseless. And now you see the referee being brought in. Brian Hebner tossed in while Jarrett applies Joe's submission hold. Yeah. Legs are in. Carbon copy of what Joe does with that with that rear naked That's two. Yeah. The life is out. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the match. Yeah. Wow. Man, that, oh. Talk about a whacked out turn of events there. Never thought I would see Jarrett win this match via submission. Not only just a submission, Samoa Joe's rear choke. Of course, the assist with a Billy Bob and, and Gunner and Murphy. I, I get all that. But and that's the difference maker. Totally. Yeah, Joe was that. in total control at that point of the match. On the verge of victory. Hit the big move. Referee taken out. And that was the opening. Gunner and Murphy come into play. And Jarrett beats Joe with his own hole. He choked him out. Well, yeah, they sure did. And it just, just, just choked him out hard. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go back. Let's revisit what has gone down tonight at Turning Point.
paradigm This the turning point where one blow will turn your joints Ain't nothing nice in the square with that point of hustle You're like the music game where everything is gonna crumble CDs to download, we on that download This is the turning point, the point of no return This is the turning point, you get the point you get on at turning point have to ask you first question that comes to my mind you ever been put in that kind of a situation or position where you got beat by your own finishing hole uh, like no. Jeff Jarrett just beat some over Joe no no that's a slap in the face I mean it's, it really is I mean part of my French it's a kick in the nuts to yeah. be honest it's the ultimate some, dishonor yeah, isn't it when someone does that especially first you know first Jarrett used the Billy Club to get that choke right. across the artery here which cuts the, the blood supply off to your brain then he once the referee got woken up by Gunnar and Murphy, boom, then he, he hooks on the choke again, does Jarrett, wins via submission. Taz, let's set the stage for our Turning Point main event, TNA World Heavyweight title match. And initially, we expected Mr. Anderson to be the challenger for Jeff Hardy, but that vicious, violent chair shot to the head by Jeff Hardy has sidelined Mr. Anderson with the very serious concussion issues. And, and, and Anderson, unfortunately, is still not cleared to, to, to compete, so uh, we're, we're staying on top of that situation and we have more information on it. We'll let you know uh, in weeks to come on Impact. But now the door's open for Matt Morgan. This is his chance to become world champ. Oh, humongous opportunity for Matt Morgan, who I got a funny feeling is gonna make the most of his opportunity tonight here against Jeff. Yeah, I, know, I, I, I don't wanna too. interrupt you. I'm hearing that something's gone down in the back with Christy Hemme. Excuse me, I don't I don't mean to break up your celebration, but whoa, whoa, whoa. What, what what's going on here? What what are you up to? Well, first of all, welcome to the brotherhood of the true immortals. <laughs> you guys, and my brother from another mother, the the Reverend Special K. <laughs> you were too much, brother. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, the Pope, I mean I know he's your brother and all, but he's really quite the douchebag. All he had to do was like raise the pay a little bit. He could have had you for the night, but we doubled the day rate. We got to play. What, what can I say? <laughs> We're just a little smarter. Oh, what do you think, man? Do they look good on me? Oh, no, you guys are too much. Hey, I'll tell you what. Oh, you guys, I love you guys. We're gonna have a little party tonight before we do. What do we uh, What do we say we hang out for a little while and just watch uh, Jeff Hardy kick Matt Morgan's ass. World title match, then we play. Yes. All right, let's go do it, man. Forgiveness is something that we all have in us. But so few are willing to give. Oh, to hit the twist of fate! It was more like a twist of hate! Twist of hate. The fact is, we all do each other wrong. We're all messed up. It's human nature. For my pain! My words are biblical. Some are even referring to me as the new antichrist, antichrist. of professional wrestling. Antichrist. A lot of people are confused. They think I don't give anymore, but I give away concussions. And they're free. And I hope to see you soon, buddy. I hope you get your chance real soon to give me a concussion. Make me bleed. Take my championship. Because <laughs> you deserve it. You really do. Was Eric Bischoff dead serious when he said he's going to make Anderson wrestle with the concussion tonight? Yeah, he sure was. Whatever Bischoff and Hogan put down, we as Fortune support. The massacre of Mr. Anderson is taking place, and there ain't a damn thing you or anybody else can do about it. Matt Morgan is just living right now. Matt Morgan, no longer part of Fortune, not a part of Immortal. He is persona non grata. 
This ain't done. They should have killed me when they had the chance. Ken Anderson, all you've got to do is come to this ring, pin me one, two, three, and sign this contract, and you've got Jeff Hardy. Carter not too long ago about putting an open contract up there like that with anybody to sign on the dotted line and then Eric goes out there and makes the same exact mistake? How awesome is that? Well, I'm gonna destroy Jeff Hardy. Bet on it. Matt Morgan, you f***ed up by signing your life away. You have no idea what you're in for. Turning point is the end of you. Challenges the charismatic enigma Jeff Hardy for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. This is it. Time for our turning point main event, the big one. The TNA World Heavyweight Championship. It goes to the victor, and we're going to preview the match with the tail of the tape. Well, as you'll see here in a second, Listen, the champion giving up huge size against the challenger, but the TNA champ has shown a new dark and twisted side as of late. Serious challenge faces Hardy tonight in the blueprint. Matt Morgan. Well, it was it was back on 10-10-10 at Bound for Glory. We witnessed the formation of Immortal. The new regime took charge, and they ensured that Jeff Hardy would leave as TNA World Heavyweight Champ. Hardy's vicious, his violent chair shot to Mr. Anderson's head. Well, not only sidelined Anderson with a concussion, but in the process, it cost Ken his world title shot. And with Anderson injured, Matt Morgan stepped up. He pointed out the danger in forcing Anderson to compete with head injuries. It cost Morgan his role in Fortune, his role in Immortal, but he ended up gaining a world title shot, and tonight, he has the opportunity to become world champion for the first time. Well, Matt Morgan, the blueprint has been on a crusade. You certainly can't question the courage of this man's convictions to fight for what he believes in when it comes to the concussion issues of Mr. Anderson. Well, I, I completely agree, and I respect Matt Morgan and that crusade. I really do, and, and his intentions, trying to protect a fellow wrestler. But I do think it was a bad move for his career, unless he wins the championship tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall and is your main event of the evening. When the bell rings, the man in charge, TNA official, Mr. Jackson James. And now, live from Universal Studios, Orlando, Florida, it's time for your main event of the evening. Introducing, first of all, standing in the corner to my left, he weighed in this morning at 310 pounds and stands seven feet tall. From Fairfield, Connecticut, he is the challenger, the blueprint, Matt Morgan. And now, Introducing his opponent. He weighed in this morning at 225 pounds and comes to us from Cameron, North Carolina. Tonight, he makes his first title defense as the TNA Heavyweight Champion of the World, the Charismatic Enigma Champion. Hardy. 
Well, two very different type of competitors here, Mike, and uh, the champion. Uh, he's off color, man. He's just a bizarre individual. And he's just motivated lately by hatred. He's is, is the TNA World Champion, Jeff Hardy. When Hardy was talking about Turning Point, he said, we're going to let the blood flow. You're going to see the real side of Jeff Hardy. And he promised the twist of hate would put away Matt Morgan. Let's face it. I mean, look, and that's the thing here. Jeff Hardy has got to be careful not to play a game of any type of power or striking game with this enormous, massive blueprint Matt Morgan. Looked at the tail of the tape, and Taz, you detailed the height and weight advantage that the challenger has in this match. Well, you know, listen. Jeff Hardy is used to competing against, I think for years he's done that. I think it's safe to say against men that are a lot larger than him. Good point. And, and look, you know, no matter if you like this, this new disposition of Jeff Hardy or not, there is no one can argue the fact of that man right there, the teenage champion, his resiliency. I just think that uh, Matt Morgan has the tools to see how resilient you really are. You, you talked about that new disposition and and what goes with it in, in terms of, of Hardy's offensive attack. And we've certainly seen a little different side of Jeff Hardy also in terms of his offense. And maybe that's good just with moves like that. Violence. We're, we're, the, we've seen violent side of of uh, you know of Jeff Hardy. I mean, Jeff Hardy's at the top of the mountain, the TNA World Champion. He knows he's got to stay there. And that's the thing now, see, Matt Morgan, you know, the big thing with Morgan is his cockiness, his arrogance, and that's what makes Matt tick. He don't care what you think about him. You saw what how he, he was, was with, with, you know, Bischoff right. and Flair and, and, and Fortune, he don't care. You know, and I, I respect that of Matt Morgan. No, they were irresponsible. Pointed that out. Cost him his position with Fortune and Immortal. We talked about taking the low road. Hardy's done that, and that's what has turned this match in his favor. Whoa, Until whoa, the strength God. and power of Matt Morgan comes into play. Well, that's the thing. If, you, if you're Matt Morgan to challenge you, you got to watch your emotions. You see, listen, man, here's the deal, okay? This is a fact. Jeff Hardy, TNA World Champion, who's laid out on the outside of the ring right now, he has a lot more big match experience than Matt Morgan. I, I, Great right point. Wrong. Okay. Great point. And I really feel that as far as poise goes, Jeff Hardy, you know, he doesn't look too poised right now, but he, he's got a lot of poise. And I think that's going to you know, have a big effect in this matchup here. If Morgan can keep his head, because he's got a temper issue. That's the point I was just going to ask you about. If Matt Morgan maybe gets too hot-headed here, could, could come back to haunt him. Yeah, because Hardy will just, he'll play right into Hardy's hands. I like the fact that Matt Morgan is not going out after Jeff. Oh, oh, my God. Spit right in the face Jeez. of Morgan. You really can't disrespect anybody more than that. That's the real oh, Jeff Hardy, I guess. Again, we talked about poison. What did he do? What, what did Jeff do? He triggered Morgan, but Morgan, not a dummy. He knows a trap. Yeah, put on the brakes, drags him to the apron, and now he can lay in those blows right across the chest. Pretty well documented that Matt Morgan is one of the more, oh, from an intelligence standpoint, a very intelligent competitor. You know, he's got a very uh, esteemed academic background, uh, you know, and, and he's, he's far from a, a dumb guy, but it seems like early goings, he kept his poise, he kept his head in check. While Hardy was doing everything within his power to try and get Morgan, well, cover here, to lose his head. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, and it's easy to lose your head if you're Matt Morgan with someone like a Jeff Hardy who shows, you know, gives someone a concussion in Anderson. Well, Anderson should have been in this match, obviously, and that shows no remorse for it. None. You know, and and I, I don't disagree, and some will not agree with my point on this, but I don't disagree with Hardy not showing remorse. This is not ballet. This is not, you know, ballroom dancing. This is a physical game. It's always been. That's pro wrestling, at least in TNA. Let's talk about the offense of, of Jeff Hardy, the champion in this match. Chop the leg out, man. Pretty obvious yeah. what he's got in mind for Morgan, and it's sound. Chop down that giant redwood, Mike. It is sound. It's a smart strategy to keep the larger competitor on the mat. 
He's not bigger than you when he's laying on his back. Caught him in the head with the blow, goes for the cover, and I'm not even sure if he got one. Barely one before Morgan powers out. So there's a lot left in the tank of Morgan, but at the same time, his oh, whoa, his, whoa, whoa, whoa. His, look at this. He's sorry. What Hardy's doing is just taking away with that straightened out leg ball. Oh, body strength of Morgan. That's, he's working on the knee at this well, point, right? Yeah, he's got he's got the he's got a his grip a figure four grip. His hands, his arms are figure four. An under and over grip on that knee, on his knee, now floats over to a single leg. That's, Boston that's grip. a great transition, too, Absolutely. right there into that move. And when you've you got to give him his due. And Mike, when you have really long legs like Matt Morgan, it's a disadvantage. That's a submission just nightmare for you, man. So it's a target it's, for oh, Jeff Hardy. The longer the limb, the easier to apply holds, man. It's more to work with. Sure. You know? And Morgan fights through the pain of the single leg crab. Gonna try and Close the distance, the gap between himself and the ring ropes to, to get a potential break here. Got that, that single leg crab on perfectly, uh, Je Jeff Hardy does. He's got a key lock at the same time, the reaching through and, and oh, grasping his wrist with oh, his other actually, hand. He's actually cheating because he's hanging onto the knee pad too. His grip, he's got more grip because he's gripping uh, uh, Matt Morgan's knee pad. See, I don't know if you can tell by his right hand, he's gripping the pad. Referee uh, Jackson not noticing that. Uh-oh. Just pushed. Referee Jackson James and got right in his face and realizes that he's got to concentrate on the task at hand and that's continuing the beat down on the challenger and taking advantage of the injured knee and leg of oh, Morgan. Listen, look, hey. Watch this, stakes it out and cannonballs down across the knee. Yeah, Jeff Hardy, the TNA World Champion, he will not stop the pressure on the knee of Matt Morgan. He will just stay, just pinpoint accuracy. Wow. That's a great way to tear apart someone's lateral collateral ligament in their knee. The ligament across your knee. That twisting motion when you drive all your way down on it. Wait, whoa, 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 Knee whoa. drop leads to a lateral pin for two. And well, you cannot question the strategy and game plan of, of Jeff Hardy. We're, we're watching him just execute it to perfection. And it's quite honestly got him in control of the world title match. Beat down of Morgan, the challenger continues. At this point, Morgan has got to get back up to his feet. Bad leg, bad knee or not. He's got to get back up to the vertical base if he's going to have any kind yep. of a chance to get any kind of offensive momentum started against Hardy. Right, no, you're, you're correct, Mike, and you see Jeff Hardy keeping all his weight on the back of, uh, of Matt Morgan. Matt's so tall and so big. And not just, he's not lanky because he's so thickly, muscularly, bu muscularly built. Look, he can't even, Hardy's trying to pull, pull Morgan across the ring and it, to no avail. Oh, wow. He's back up to his feet. And he's got the offense going. Strikes of all kinds from the challenger. And now Matt Morgan can feel it. Yeah, Morgan on fire right now. He senses it, he senses it, and boom! Stacked him up, discus style, clothesline, cover, Go and oh! Referee in perfect position there. You see right there, Matt Morgan trying to wake that quad up or his knee joint. Matt Morgan now seems to be in control. He's able to put some weight in that knee, so it's not as bad as maybe we thought. Nice duck under reversal by Jeff Hardy. And oh, that DDT. Yeah, Boom. jumping, jumping DDT for extra leverage. I get it, I get it. Oh. See right there, Jeff Hardy drilling that quick leg drop, springs right back up, trying to follow up with something. Challenges in trouble. Message to the Whoa, fans from Jeff Goosey. Hardy. He got Goosey. Maybe you should be concentrating on Matt Morgan instead of the crowd. 
Morgan to his feet. Hardy oh, to his back off the choke oh, slam. Here comes two and got him beat. Oh, oh, oh man, that was, that was about what two and nine tenths. <laughs> we almost crowned the new champ right there. What do you think, Ric Flair? Watching this, how Morgan was his insurance policy. Morgan just kind of just. How disappointed could Flair be in Morgan? That was all because of the crusade and the belief oh. well, of Morgan who gets caught with the low blow. Not sure if the ref even saw I'm him. I'm not sure the, that he did either. Because Hardy had pulled the ref first. Oh, oh, twist the hate. Caught him. Champ covers and gets two. He retained. Wow. Oh, wow. Whoa. That's impressive. Morgan kicking out of that twister fate, which I think I might refer to from now on as yeah. the twist I hate. Because of the hatred and the black heart of Jeff Hardy. Look on the face of Hardy. Tells me that not only surprised, but it's, it's almost like, what else do I have to do? Hit the twist of hate, follow up to a, a great game plan well, for Jeff Hardy, but still not able to put the challenger and away, and now he's... sense the frustration, yeah, Mike. Right you know, there with all those punches. Uh, Hardy knows, he knows that. Look at that. Oh, oh, he's got, got, got him. He's got him. Here's one. He did Here's it. Two. He's got him. He's got him. But two. He's got a pin. What? The referee was out of position there, Mike. He, he, the, he saw the leg kick. It looked like... We saw the leg kick, but did, did, it looked like referee Jackson James saw the leg kick, but I don't think he realized that uh, Jeff Hardy's shoulders, they seemed to be that they were still flat and pinched. Oh, you got to follow up. You got yeah. you know, to follow up him. Morgan just got to stay on him. Jeff Hardy, he got drilled with that carbon footprint. A dazed Jeff Hardy brought back up to his feet. There it is! Twist of hate by Hardy out of nowhere! Stacks up the oh. But Morgan in absolute survival mode at this point. Uh, yeah, and Hardy. amazingly able to kick out. Jeff Hardy, he's just P.O. He's pissed, he's angry. I, I think if he would have followed up and maybe tried to do another twist of hate or, or something else, he might have retained. Morgan avoids the contact in the corner. We brought headbutt there that rocked the champ. Caught him again, and that time right on the button. Morgan still favoring the left knee. Going to position the champ. Up in the corner, and Hardy caught him with an elbow that surprised Morgan. No! Oh! Whispering the wind off the top. Morgan down again. Hardy stalks. Oh, oh look at Hardy. Measures. Hardy's got it! Third time, twist to hate. And this time he gets the three count to keep the title. The winner of 10, 10, 10 at Bound for Glory. And tonight at Turning Point. Immortal remains in power. Immortal is in control in TNA.